toward Death Holler brought us Season 3 Slash or Pass It became the classic horror film podcast of its time And now Death Holler brings us the most shocking season ever Season 4 Dead or dead yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Imagine, if you will, that one of the hosts is absolutely terrified of zombies. So, what's the plan? Bash him in the head, that seems to work out. Now, accept the fact there is no escaping this horror. Death Holler brings back the dead. Death Holler. Listener discretion is advised. With a hospitality like this, you'll never want to leave. We hope you stay alive. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk here. everyone welcome back to death holler i'm your host reverend dr death and joining me with her running shoes on is my co-host la urena do you think any of us have a chance against super fast zombies urena uh how no not even with my fancy running shoes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think we're fucked in that situation yeah. um today we are covering the olympic runners of the zombie genre the usain bolts of the undead if you will while Zack Snyder may have had fast zombies, the ones in these three films take the prize for just outright speed and brutality. If the zombie apocalypse involves anything like the creatures in these films, we can bend over and just kiss our asses goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the only saving grace, assuming you didn't die immediately and become one, is that they are easier to defeat than traditional Romero zombies. So board up your doors and windows, hop on the treadmill and get that heart pumping and join us as we cover 28 days later, 28 weeks later, and World War Z. First up, if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd appreciate it if you'd take the time to like, comment, subscribe on whatever podcast platform you prefer. It helps us get more visibility on podcast listings and helps us grow. Also, consider following us on social media. You can find us on TikTok and Twitter under Death Holler Pod, and we can be found on Instagram and Facebook under Death Holler Podcast. We appreciate everyone who listens and hope you enjoy the show. You know, I have to say, I've listened. We get we get a few people here and there that are like, why aren't you here? Why aren't you there? Trying to fix, if you're listening on Apple or what is it, Apple Podcast or whatever, I apologize. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on. Our distributor doesn't know what's going on they've tried to help they said everything looks good on their end and they've told me to contact apple and i have not had the energy (laughs) to even attempt that so i kind of want to just do a reboot and see if i can get it to work again however we did get ourselves on youtube podcast so i did not know that was a thing (laughs) And then they turn around and send us an email saying, this is banned in so many countries due to copyright infringement for the songs that you use. We're not in Russia. What are we going to do? <laughs> what I, are I we going to do? <laughs> Sorry, Russians. Uh, first up, 28 Days Later from 2002. Tagline, his fear began when he woke up alone. His terror began when he realized he wasn't. That's actually really good. 
That is a good one. It's not as good as when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth, but this is a good, this is top five. Yeah, I agree. It's it's one of the better ones. When I read it, I'm like, okay, that's fucking good. Yeah, and this um, reminded me of him waking up alone reminded me of, um, oh, God, why can't, why am I drawing a blank? Another zombie movie uh, that they woke up alone. Um, oh, not not um, not a zombie movie, Walking Dead. Uh, the Walking Dead stole their intro. It from has this. This to is, be. No, it's it's a clear like. I mean, you could say what you want to. It's a loving homage or whatever from um, uh, Kirk Kirkland or whatever is that wrote the Walking Dead, but like the comic because that's it's the same intro in the comic as it is in the TV show. But uh, yeah, it's it, it is definitely. Um, uh, stolen from that. So. Yeah, it came out because The Walking Dead, the comic specifically, not even the show. We know the show came out way later, but the comic is from 2003. So one yeah. year. I don't know if they've ever even admitted it either is the sad part because, I mean, I, I think they might have, but then there's people that's like, no, it's he got this from something. I'm like, no, it's it's the same setup. Yes, I mean, 100%. There is no difference in it. Uh, there's no real reason that you would argue otherwise. I mean, um, so it's, but it's, it's kind of cool that they both have the same kind of intro in yeah, that way. I like it. Um, all right. We have it. Uh, the movie is directed by Danny Boyle, uh, written by Alex Garland. We got music from John Murphy made for a budget of 8 million us dollars or 5 million pounds uh it actually made 82.7 million dollars worldwide Ooh, so barely made any money wow yeah yeah it barely you know it just almost you know. tanked <laughs> uh and remember this is the movie that made universal originally think oh yeah go ahead and do your Zack Snyder remake and then House of the Dead came out like you know a year after this and they were like oh okay scratch that apparently zombies are dead now after just one movie I don't Universal's weird sometimes yeah, yeah you know I don't know I don't look at as long as they keep doing good at Halloween Horror Nights we can't complain but we can complain about the movies and they need to get with it <laughs> uh principal players we have Killian Murphy never heard uh, of them. I, yeah, I, I might have said Cillian at one point in time. His name's Killian, or at least most people say that. I thought it was Cillian. I, you know, um, but it's Killian Murphy from what I understand, you know. Uh, playing Jim, the former cyclist delivery man turned survivor. He he got hit while he was out delivering something, and that was probably the best thing that ever happened to him in his life because he would probably be a rage-filled zombie otherwise. Yeah, he got real lucky. <laughs> Uh, he was, uh, obviously recent success of Oppenheimer. I mean, he's all over the Oscars and Never I, think heard he of even it. Won, I think he even won the Oscar for that Ooh. movie. Uh, Batman begins the dark Knight. the dark Knight rises. He played Jonathan Crane slash scarecrow in those, um, all Jonathan or all, uh, uh Nolan movies, mm -hmm. uh, Peaky Blinders, you know, women are losing their shit over the character he plays in that cause women like a bad boy and that's what he plays. Uh, Sunshine, another Danny Boyle movie. Is one he did that before he did this one. Uh, Inception, Dunkirk, uh, Quiet Place Part Two. I he actually had a that. very good part in that. Yeah, I liked him in that. And then Red Eye, where he plays the bad guy, I believe. Oh my God, he's playing the bad guy. Okay, do do you remember when he was playing? Basically, he was the Scarecrow in a Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember when people were like not excited about that? <laughs> I mean, I no, guess, to be fair, don't. you don't? I don't remember it because, like, anything that people might have said about that those movies got blasted out of my mind immediately after watching them, and uh, and I watched them, and I'm like, okay, these people are idiots. These are amazing. No, so. we know that. Like, that's, that's, that's a side. Like, we understand that. But, like, before even it gets a chance, like, it's the same thing that's going on with the Crow remake right now. You have this amazing actor that you know is an amazing actor, and you're like, regardless of how bad the direction goes, you know he's going to make that character amazing. The one thing that people are using against Skarsgård in the role of the Crow that is that look that they gave him of the Joker from the Suicide Squad movie, the first one. And everybody 
initially gave shit to the Joker look. Then everybody was like, wait, wait, you know, he's actually a good actor. Mm -hmm. He can pull this and he is in different roles, but the character ended up sucking just as fucking bad as everybody thought he was going to. And now they're like, yep, if you look like that fucking freak, you're going to be yeah. you know, it's, it's straight. And I don't, I do think Skarsgård will knock it out of the park. It's just too. that look, that look is tainted now. It, it's, it's automatically gives you, you know, Gen Z, you know, twink, you know, bullshit vibes that nobody wants to put up with. So now the new person playing the scarecrow is in Zombie Land, I think. What's that actor, that kid? Is it Zombie Land? Are, are you talking about Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah, is, yes. He oh no, he is he is he the new no, he's another character. He played uh and a very terrible job at it too. I mean, no, no fault to him, but they just didn't give him much to work with. In Zack Snyder's uh, Superman movies, he played Lex Luthor. No, and, he did play Lex Luthor. Okay, I'm oh sorry. God, I, that was awful. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> okay, I thought those two were put together, but anyways, yeah. Um, Killian Murphy. I didn't. I didn't even know him that well as an actor, and I didn't think he was going to be a bad um, scarecrow in the Batman I, movies. I, I had no opinion about him. The the thing that they were giving shit about was um, uh, Christian Bale. I mean, every time there's a new Batman cast, they're like bullshit. You know, they and and now it's funny. They go back and and it's you know they they always say they'll never beat you know Michael Keaton and and like it's funny because when Michael Keaton was cast, everybody was like Mr. I... Mom. Mr. Mom's going to be Batman. I freaked out. I was like, this is not going to work. And he <laughs> truly ended up being one of the best Batmans. Did you see that one clip from the Oscars where Danny DeVito and um, Arnold Schwarzenegger were giving a, uh, uh, some award? And they were talking about how they were both in Batman movies. And they asked who Danny DeVito's Batman was. And he said he was in the audience. And they pan over to Michael Keaton. Did you see that? I didn't know. I don't. It, I don't you, watch you, the Oscars. You need to look it up. I mean, I only know it because oh, okay. I, it's on the internet. But like, it's perfect because when they go out there, they they talk about how maybe the two of them together can beat him, and it goes to Michael Keaton, and he he's not lost the beat. He's got that look on his face, like you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. And he, <laughs> and, and he moves his hands up, and he's just like, "Come get some," you know? Yeah. So it's like it's perfect. Um, God, we're going on such a tangent right now, but Danny DeVito recently did an interview where he was talking about Batman films and he was talking about how he was the best penguin. And I mean, hands down, he was, uh, he don't have much competition though, no. sadly. So. You no, know, he doesn't. I mean, he's sh literally shaped like the penguin. So, Hey, you know what? Whatever. But anyways, he was talking about the best Batman and they were like, they started naming all the different Batmans and his, you know, Michael Keaton was like the second or third because obviously he wasn't the first one. And he's like, Michael Keaton. And they're like, well, do you want to see? He's like, no, Michael Keaton. And they're like, <laughs> and he, and he rattled off without missing a beat. He rattled off why he was the best and why there was no argument. And he goes, it, I mean, it was his opinion. So it's not like, you know. But, yeah, they can't invalidate his own opinion on who he thinks the best Batman is. And so. he was like, everyone else was great. He's like, I don't hate everyone. He's like, he just was the best. So, And he wasn't wrong, so. But circling back, every time they cast a new Batman, I, I thought Ben Affleck was amazing in the scenes they had him as Batman, and people gave him so much shit. Didn't so. he do a lot of his fucking stunts, too, which is fucking insane? Yeah, and I mean, yes, he, I mean, it, it's it's very much his version of Batman was was way closer to like at least the Arkham games if you've ever seen or played those. That's like they the were thing. Really good. So was the Joker though, and the comics. Uh, uh, not n not Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah, he was not some no, of the comics no, I no, saw no. and some of the animated films was definitely Jared Leto's. Uh, Jared Leto was awful. Like, I mean, I, I know Heath Ledger, uh, you know, I would even, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is a great Joker. Yeah, but those no. are more emotional Jokers. This was, again, like I said, this is more the fucking psycho, psycho, not calm psycho either uh, uh, Joker. Because you got to understand, in the Joker films, you, those guys were kind of making sense, were they not? They were crazy, but were they not making sense? Well, Joker has to make a little bit of sense, though. Yes. I mean, that's that's the whole point of his character because him and Batman are like, you know, opposite sides of the same coin. Like, they're, one is, is seemingly sane, Batman, but yes. he's clearly insane. He dresses up like a bat and beats up people. Mm -hmm. And the other one's clearly insane, but he has moments where he speaks truths that everybody doesn't want to admit. You know, it's like that's that's what they are. That's their dynamic, you know. Here on Death Holler, we do not discriminate talking about the Batman. <laughs> plenty of bats in scary films 
he his some of his villains are straight up horror. Oh you know, yeah, they, they really are. He's got a serial killer that wears a pig face or whatever, Professor Pig. So, I mean, it's not like he's outside of it. No, he's definitely within that realm. And, yeah, I don't know. I just don't place all the Jokers in the same. I know it is the character of the Joker, and Batman has kind of remained the same for the most part. But all the different characters that have played the Joker, I have enjoyed their version of it to a degree. But I've also seen it in different avenues, not just in the movies. So, like I said, I didn't... I wouldn't put Jared Leto in my top of the Jokers by any means. However, I have seen his version in animated and in comics and enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, well, I get it. I'm not saying everybody else has to, but that's just where I stand on it. I'm I'm Danny DeVitoing it right now. All we can say is that Margot Robbie, you know, uh, she... There's a reason Harley Quinn became popular. (laughs) Oh, I felt like Harley Quinn was popular before and then it was just like... She's, she was popular for the animated series, but she took it to a whole new level, or yeah. Margot Robbie did. And now, I don't know, she she kind of made a character, that a role model full of girls that should never Not be, a role, be model. a role model. I know, and that's sad. But you know what, now that's what she, it's okay. She brought it back with Barbie. It's okay. <laughs> she, she stepped it back. We're good. All right, next up in our principal players getting back to the movie is uh, Naomi Harris playing Selena, who is a seemingly emotionless survivor in this movie uh, until she's not at the end. She she has a good character arc yeah. that way. Uh, she was in Moonlight, Skyfall, No Time to Die, Jesus. Spectre, a lot of double yeah. seven movies. Uh, I think she plays Miss uh, Money Penny or whatever her name is, and and the new ones with or or the newer ones with Daniel Craig. Uh, she was in Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean, both at World's End and Dead Man's Chest. And she was in the uh, Wayne Rock Johnson movie Rampage, which Jesus. It's, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's enjoyable for a popcorn film. She's got a good roster of films. Yeah, she damn. She went, I mean, she went from being a virtual. That's something that's in the notes. But they wanted virtual no names for this movie, and and or people who'd not been in a whole lot. And a lot of them have went in, went on to do a some pretty big films since this. But so, Killian Murphy wasn't good. one of these, or was he? Was he? He was at the time. He had only, I think, really done Sunshine. I mean, he okay. was, and then that's when Christopher Nolan, you know, basically was like, hey, I really liked you, you know, do you want to be in all my movies? And he's like, sure. And then now he's a household name. He's got a job for life. <laughs> he pretty much does, yeah. Uh, Brendan Gleeson plays Frank, father and former taxi driver and uh, can't figure out how to harvest water for shit. (laughs) Uh, He was in the Banshees of Inishirin. Uh, The guy literally cuts off his own hand, or fingers at least, just to spite Colin Farrell in that movie. It's it's a whole thing, but it's it's interesting. Uh, He was in In Bruges, uh, The Guard, Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Edge of Tomorrow, Harry Potter, where he, I uh, mean, in, in a couple of different ones, he plays Mad Eye Mooney in those, if you've ever seen them, which I know you have it because you're not, not no. a big Harry Potter person. Uh, Mr. Mercedes, Stephen King uh, based TV series, uh, Ghost in the Graveyard, and The Raven. He's been, so he's been in quite a bit too. Yeah. Most of the plays like a character actor part or whatever. Uh, Megan Burns plays Hannah, who is Frank's daughter and the youngest known survivor in the, at least in the first movie. Uh, she decided she didn't want to go into acting or gave it up for a good long time, went into music, and only recently came back and started doing shorts within the last, like, five years. Okay. So uh, Christopher Eccleston plays Major Henry West, who is the leader of the last known military blockade, and he is primarily known by Who fans or Whovians as the Ninth Doctor. Okay. Um, Which is funny because World War Z has the Twelfth Doctor in the movie. So it's kind of weird that they yeah. <laughs> kind of got those. He was also in Thor Dark World, uh, Gone in 60 Seconds, and the flu, and he narrates a, a documentary called The Flu That Killed 50 Million, which is about the Spanish flu. Okay. Which he does have a good narrating voice. <laughs> yeah, he he's a great actor. I mean, he he's really good for what he does. Yeah, regardless of who he was in this film. Yeah, well, it's funny. You can tell the other military guys in this movie or there's something wrong with them, mm-hmm. but he is he's so good. Like until he reveals his ulterior motives, yeah. he seems like a good guy. Like he totally does. I 
we'll get into it in the film, his character and what he was trying to do. So, yeah. Um, synopsis Jim wakes up from a coma to find that he is the last person alive. I can't do or it. Or at least, <laughs> or at least it seems that way until a psychotic priest and his few living parishioners start running toward Jim. Uh, 28 days earlier, a rage virus had escaped an animal testing lab and spread like wildfire over jolly old England. Now the few old, the few people who remain uh, uninfected live in fear of exposure to the infected blood and the psychotic rage-filled monsters it created. Jim is running for his life. Selena is pretty handy with a knife, and Frank is seeing red. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> be thankful for everything, for soon there will be nothing. Oh, my God, that's good. That's sad. Uh, <laughs> uh, other taglines, day one, exposure. Day three, infection. Day eight, epidemic. Day 15, evacuation. Day 20, devastation. Too much. Too long, didn't read, and it, yeah, it says nothing. Yeah, it's nowhere nothing. near as good as that one I read for the main tagline. It, that one's perfect. You yeah. don't need any more. And then finally, the days are numbered. And that's which, not bad because the poster. It's a, it, it's a, it's a pun, yeah. so it works too. The you poster, know? the title, and that, I mean, it's all you need. Um, but, yeah, you're right. The first one is perfection. Uh, what was I going to say real quick? Oh, Jim, waking up in the hospital. Okay, knowing what we know about apocalypses and people waking up alone in hospitals with no one around them, mm -hmm. would you be coming out of that hospital making hella noise like he did? Be uh, I wouldn't, but you always have to assume that these people, and I mean, this even goes for Rick in The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. You have to assume these people don't know what zombies are or have never, there's no such thing in their reality. I understand that. I, and, and, and that's the thing is that even I, okay, so like I'm a terrified of zombies and I think that, that they could be a thing. However, logically, they're likely not. What is more likely in the situation if you wake up in a hospital, in my opinion, is that some kind of apocalyptic occurrence occurred. Um, people got COVID and passed. Without turning or coming back, I should say, or some kind of war happened where a lot of people got depleted and I managed to survive that. So my fear coming out wouldn't be getting hit by a zombie. It would be somebody attacking me from another military or country or something like that. Also zombies. <laughs> well here's here's two thought, thoughts about that first of all yes anytime that there's a major catastrophe they 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 always tell you that training in the for the event of a zombie i mean or at least prep you know survival prep people will tell you yeah training for a zombie apocalypse is not terrible in the sense that it trains you for what will really happen which is you know the lack of resources will cause people to go to their most primal basic nature which is to say pillage rape kill yes. and you need to treat them like you would treat a zombie and keep them in arm's length and fucking be ready to kill anybody yeah. who moves in on you so that's you know that's perfectly good to treat you know like it could happen because in a roundabout way it can secondly here's something to think about so if you believe in the idea of like this, is just a thought experiment of like uh, parallel universes and, you know, the and, and that sort of thing. What if Romero, by making the first zombie movie, prepared us and and made us to where we are so uh, acknowledgeable of a potential zombie, you know, threat that that keeps us protected in a roundabout sense because if we started seeing like something like this pop up, most of us be like, that's a goddamn zombie. Kill yeah. It, kill it now. Kill the fire. <laughs> get rid of it. Like, I mean, we're prepared to stop it before, I mean, or at least within reason yeah. versus like all these other universes we see in zombie movies where they're like, what's that dead body over? Let me lean over top of it and see <laughs> if it's still breathing. <laughs> cough, cough, World War Z. Um, <laughs> Um, but you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I think that because we have that as part of our fiction, like maybe it, it protects us from the possibility of it happening. Yeah. I mean, like he, he's confused. All he knows he got hit. I'm surprised he even remembers he got hit by a vehicle because he was out for 28 days. And how long was he? Oh, I guess it must have been just a couple days that the hospital was out. Cause I'm like, God, he would have gotten an infection at the sites where he had his, you know. 
I always think about that. And there's also the possibility too, and uh, that I don't know if you've ever seen this, but if you, if an IV bag runs dry at a certain point, like because of viscosity and like surface tension, Mm -hmm. it starts pulling blood out of your body. So you may, it makes you, because they actually use that in one of the movies that it was Halloween two. Remember the original Halloween two, Michael Myers used, I mean, of course he, he positioned it down so that, you know, like, um, uh, gravity would feed it more, but if there's nothing going into your veins, it will start pulling stuff from your veins, even if it's a little bit because it can't travel all the way back up to the bag. Yeah, it's still going to be <clears throat> draining blood from you. So mm-hmm. every time I see that in these things, I'm like, why are they not bleeding? They they would be bleeding from this because the, the IV yeah. would be pulling that, or um, the machine was obviously off. There's no power at this point, so it's not like it was, you know, doing anything. So I'm thinking, well, it was just a stagnant needle in there at that point. The one thing I wonder in both this and The Walking Dead, Mm -hmm. what is it about them being in a coma that doesn't trigger? I mean, now I give it more credence in this because these zombies are more like sight and sound based. If something moves, it's like, you know, like a a predator looking for something in its vision Mm -hmm. and then they go after it. So he's not moving. So they're like, that's not that's just the body. You know, I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, and it's, he's not making any sounds, but the walking dead makes less sense because I mean, I know they rounded up the dead and they kind of like somebody. And I think in the show, it might've been, it was like Shane or somebody like that came in and kind of like bolted his door shut. So they wouldn't get into him. No, oh, yeah. But like, but the, the Romero type zombies, they, they operate more on smell, smell. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't they have sense that he was still alive, even if he was in a coma? You know. Yeah, I mean, other than, like you said, Shane fucking jerry-rigging his door, um, hope, hoping that it would work, and not even knowing if he was alive. They didn't know if he was alive. No, you know? they didn't. Yeah, so, I mean, he was just kind of doing that as a precaution. But um, same thing with what's-his-name. So these zombies have the rage virus, and they only work off of movement, in my opinion. I, they're not working off of sound. They're working off of movement, sound, something that will attract them. And I've not seen them, unless you've seen it, I have not seen them open a door, other than crashing through something or (laughs) going through an already open entrance. They have to open a door because, and this is something I have a problem with, 28 weeks later, Dawn is inside of a sealed room with his wife who, you know, when when he gets infected, and he has it, and he can only get in and out of this room through a key card. And somehow he has enough of his zombie brain to to be able to swipe that and get out of the room. I've never understood that. It makes no sense. But that's round two of the virus. It has enhanced at this point. (laughs) We're talking about 28 days. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Kind of, actually. Who knows? I I think the lore is more consistent in part one. They, you're right. Yeah. They don't use doors. They bust through things. Um, they, I mean, but they use their, their sheer numbers and strength to get through, you know, like if they can, you know, break through or smash through, that's what they do. You now know? They specify that this is a virus, but is it a virus or is, or is your body a host to a, what is that called when you're host to some kind of, not infection, but um, some kind of, why, why can't I think? I mean, it's, oh, you mean like a parasite? A parasite. Yeah, well, they the way that it transfers through the blood, it, it's more, it, it would be more viral, viral. because okay. uh, parasite usually has to have, I mean, because it's nasty, but they're you, usually worms or something mm-hmm. like that. They have to be able to procreate and pass on their stuff that way. Okay. So that's, you know, but yeah, it, I, but anyways, the I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's stretching the imagination a little bit to think that he could just lay there and nothing would have happened to him for, you know, while all that stuff was going around because mm-hmm. he would still been breathing. So I wonder if that would have triggered a rage zombie, but maybe they were just, they were so, I mean, the rage zombies were seeing so many other potential, mm-hmm. you know, things. It just that dragged that them away. I, yeah, yeah. I think he was so still. And so I don't know, generically alive, if you will, that it it wasn't even on their radar. It was like, oh, just, there's a person over there, attack, you know? Here, here's a question for you. What if he was snoring while he was in his coma? Now, that would have killed him. Can that you killed do that him. when you have the, did he, wait, did he have a, he didn't have a breathing machine, huh? No. No, he could have. You're right. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, he would have been dead. 
Yeah, I mean, if you'd have snored whatsoever, then something would have been like started twitching whenever they heard that snoring and came right after you. But as you recall, in this movie, I had not seen one zombie open a door. So, I don't know. <laughs> they would have figured it out, though. If they had definitely heard him, I think enough zombies would have pushed against the door. I think it's those push doors. I don't think it's the pool where you have to get in. So. It, in a hospital, at most, it would have been the kind of doors that, you know, you press the handle down, and one of them would have accidentally done it and got in there. They, and, they yeah, would have done it. 100%. And how was he the only one in a coma? There's no way he was the only guy in a coma unless other people woke up and then they were taken out, you know? Here's another terrible thought that just came to my mind, this and is I so hate fun. to even bring this up. I love this. The, the infant part of the hospital, <gasps> when they started crying, the rage zombies would have got them. Oh, 100%. But then, like, I mean, like, no, they would have definitely. But, like, what happens in the just little rage babies with gum? Like, are they going to gum you to death? Like, Yeah, I don't know, but that's a terrible thing to think about. And when those babies, because they would have started crying because that's what they do. Yeah, And, the and then all of a sudden just twitching and running in there to get them, you yeah, know? Yeah, baby rabies, man. Ugh. Horrible. <laughs> Uh, quotes for this movie as Jim enters a dark abandoned church when he sees the writing on the wall uh, the, the writing in question repent the end is extremely fucking nigh <laughs> um, it's not a lie nope um, Jim finds his dead mother who holds a photo Aww. of him reading the words that his mother wrote on the back uh, from Jim's mother with endless love we left you sleeping now we're sleeping with you don't wake up X. I was wondering what said I heard, I saw wake up and I was like does it say I hope you wake up and oh my god that is that's um wow okay that's dark yeah and that's the there's a lot of really good things in this movie from Dana Boyle where he does like world building without I mean by showing and not telling or not saying a word of yeah. dialogue or anything like that um, and this is one of those scenes. It's like you get everything in that scene perfectly. You see that the parents, you he it cuts to the scene of the the end table where the pills are poured out, so you know what killed them. Yeah. And then then the <clears> note, <throat> and it's like, okay, they thought that he was dead, that the rage zombies would have got him anyways, so they just they they did the same thing. They just went out. That you know? or they thought he was dead again because they didn't know, and they're yeah. just like, yeah, and and. And that's the other thing. He would have been so weak, like, depending upon how long he was out, which mm -hmm. you assume that he was out the entire four or at least four weeks. His body would have, his muscles would have wasted. Mm -hmm. He would have been starving, which they do bring up a little bit in the movie because he talks about having a pounding headache. Yes. And, and she tells him he's operating on pure sugar and, like, his body is just, like, screaming. It's like, I need fucking protein. I need vitamins. I need something. Like, I don't have anything. Do you, you think know. that's how his body woke up because he was no longer receiving nutrients from the hospital? So his body's like, cause you know, like a diabetic's body will try to do whatever it can. It will squirt what sugar from the liver to try yeah. to bring your sugar up. If you're super low, if it, it'll break happening. down, it'll break down fat mm -hmm. and turn and then around in a weird, in a cool actually kind of way it chemically it turns fat into sugar mm -hmm. and that's what your brain feeds off of so it, it's in survival mode so his body's like fuck we don't have anything we don't have any reserves like you need to wake up and then like that's it the pain of that triggered him awake the fact now, now i'll give danny boyle this he had him immediately go to the um vending machine yes for soda for soda and i think he uh, did, did it show him like eating candy bars? He would have had something more. Something. He, mm -hmm. he, yeah, he would have had to have something more than that. I mean, to eat because like his body was literally dying for, from hunger. At exactly, that point. and it woke him <laughs> up. So I'm thinking that's what took him out of that coma. It, it probably was, and it's probably the same thing that they use for the excuse of why Rick wakes up in The Walking Dead. Rick did a better Rick, job of waking up very weak and not able to walk. And I think that they should have went that route, honestly, with mm -hmm. Jim, because he would have – just imagine how weak you are, like not even just a headache. His eyes would have not even been focusing right. Mm -hmm. He would have been seeing like blurred vision. Like, I mean, his whole body would have been like, you know, just in a terrible state from how hungry he was. Yeah. Fuck, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, another thing about The Walking Dead, although we are going to review that pilot episode because it's so fucking good Ugh, on The Walking yeah. Dead. Um, there is the theory that all of that that happens in The Walking Dead is Rick while he's still in the coma, mm. that that's all in his mind. Wow. Could you imagine if that's what you're thinking about while you're in a coma? 
or I, dreaming you, about you you would wake up i mean uh, just think in your case like how scared you are oh, and then fuck. you had to live in a perpetual zombie apocalypse in your mind while you were in a coma I, I couldn't. I don't, would my body just give up? Would like, I just give up? Would I die in my dream and then just die in real life? I don't know, man. Uh, in the movie, Selena says, it started as writing, and right from the beginning, you know this was different because it was happening in small villages, market towns, and then it wasn't on TV anymore. It was in the street outside. It was coming through your windows. It was a virus and infection. You didn't need a doctor to tell you that. It was the blood. That's a pretty good, I mean, just summation of how the apocalypse went down while Jim was out, you know? Well, yeah, and that, and we get that scene at the beginning where they're testing on monkeys. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, you. this movie has a really good script. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it, it's very tight. They, there's a lot of scenes that, they, that a lot is shown and nothing is said between the characters. You yes. just glances and what you're seeing is all you need to get the, what you need and that's that's what makes a film good oh yeah that's what makes it different than a novel whenever you try the the bad thing that i have or like there's some things that are better in like books because the way that the story is told like for instance like happen leonard i know that some people like mike from you know rain man like the tv show but i didn't because the whole point of happen leonard is that you're hearing hap's thoughts on everything mm -hmm. and he is so funny in his thoughts that it, it makes the story better they never got that in the show because it's it's ridiculous what's happening to the characters but you but hap barely speaks because all of his mo his you know his interior monologue is in his head and you never get that in the show yeah and it, and it misses something but this is the perfect way to tell a story because it's visual. Like, you know, like I said, the, the pills on the, 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 he doesn't have to say it. You, you saw it, you know, and you know, you can make the inference and you know what's going it. on. Yeah. Uh, and then she goes on to say there was something in the blood. By the time they tried to evacuate the cities, it was already too late. The infection was everywhere. The army blockades were overrun, and that's when the exodus started. The day before the TV and radio stopped broadcasting, there were reports of infection in Paris and New York. We didn't hear anything more after that. The one problem I have with this is that 28 weeks makes it seem like it was contained on, on the Isle of Britain, you know? Yeah. And then they say this, because at the end of 28 day, or weeks later, it has spread to Paris. That's what the credit mm -hmm. sequence is but if it spread to paris and new york there is no way that the u.s would have been able to step in and, and help like they did in 28 weeks later you know what i'm saying oh, like they would have been they would have been fucked i mean for at least a while trying to deal with it in those individual countries well you gotta remember it's just a report and we always get fake news you know yeah it, it could have been i'm just saying that if you follow that through line i mean the end of this movie which i'll get into they actually didn't have that ending originally planned uh it wasn't that happy-go-lucky yeah but the ending where they're saved by the military whichever military it was um it wouldn't have been so clean cut if the rest of the world was dealing with this rage oh, virus because 100 percent, because they would have been we can't even harm <laughs> ourselves no i mean it, I think the U.S. could have contained it a little bit easier, but they would have had to do it in a very bad way, meaning the cities firebomb them. That's the only thing, like they do in 28 weeks later, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, Selena also says, look, if someone gets infected, you've got between 10 and 20 seconds to kill them. It might be your brother or your sister or your oldest friend. It makes no difference. And just so you know where you stand, if it happens to you, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Oh, 100%. And that's... <laughs> Let me see. 10 and 20 seconds. That's a good time range. 30 seconds tops was Dawn of the Dead, the newer one. Yep. And I think 12 seconds for World War Z. And I know that's exactly kind of a spoiler. Exactly 12 seconds. Yes. Yeah. And I know that is kind of a spoiler, but it's not. It's fuck, fuck off. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Um, so not only are these zombies fast at running, they are sponsored by Nike, but they are also fast at turning. They are. Uh, but I like this quote because later in the movie it pays off because when uh, Jim has, like, killed the Corporal Corporal Mitchell, uh, he's covered in blood. It looks like he might be one of them that's broke, you know, because he's been, at this point in the movie, he's been exiled from the military blockade or the, yes. the mansion, and he's been outside with them, and all they know is they just keep seeing him running and mm -hmm. then, like, you know, and she walks up to him and she puts, like, a machete to his uh, to his neck 
and uh, and she takes a half swing, but she stops, and then he looks at her and he said, "That was longer than a heartbeat." Yep. So I mean, it, it's a good payoff showing that she might talk tough, but she she didn't have the heart to actually do it whenever it came down. to Yeah. It. Oh, and did she think that he was infected? Oh yeah, because he was attacking him ravenously. He, uh, yeah, she. He looked like one of the the rage zombies yes. at that point. Okay. Which, uh, oof. um, also, he's got some fucking survival skills. Who was this guy before he was a bike, bike fucking delivery person? This, in another reality, uh, Jim would have made a perfect, like, uh, special ops agent mm-hmm. in, like, the military because he worked every single angle to in, in infiltrate that mansion and to take them out, like, you know, because he, I mean, he knew if he set the one zombie or rage zombie loose inside the place, uh, which, speaking of that, that one does open a door, right? Doesn't it, it? There's a door separating. Oh yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about when he's in the room and there's the guy in the corner that's like, I don't have any bullets. No, I'm talking okay. about they had in a, a alleyway uh, at some point of the mansion. They had the, the black, uh, yes. you know, soldier, mm-hmm. and all he does is is shoot or cut loose. Or, or shoot loose or whatever, hit the thing holding the chain that's holding him there. Yeah. And as soon as he does that, then the zombie runs off toward the door and somehow gets inside the mansion. That door was fucking flimsy. Did he go through the door? or I thought he scaled the wall for some reason. No, he went through the door, I'm okay. pretty sure. Did so you see that, that door, though? It was very... Very flimsy. It, it wasn't. It, like I said, I think they can get inside as long as it doesn't require too much thought. Yes. To, you know, to get in there. This door is because I saw Jim walk into the door. It closed as if it was just like a swing, like it didn't have an actual latch on it. And then he pulled it open and jumped inside. That was when he was introduced to that zombie. And then uh, he stood out there for a minute looking at it. And then it comes after him, and he's, like, trying to get inside. It was hella yeah. funny. It was a very good scene. If that was an accident, it worked out great for the film. But if that was him acting, even better, because it looked like it was a pure accident. <laughs> um, but, yeah, getting back to his, like, ability to infiltrate the place. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. him using the zombie, and then, like, he, or the rage human, whatever you want to say. And uh, and then he, he, he goes at them one at a time. Like, he does it. He knows if he goes in a group that they've yeah. got the guns, they've got the weapons, but he picks them off one by one. Well, they don't know that he's there. They think they all, at the mansion, they suspect that he's dead already. And then they don't know that this fucking uh, zombie is running around, which that was kind of, it worked for Jim, but it almost didn't. That was very dangerous. It- yeah, it well, it was a it was a tactic that he knew could be. That's why he was specifically going after the two of them because he knew he was playing with fire in that yes. situation. Um, but even the, before he even gets back to the mansion, when they track him back to the blockade and he's running that, you know, oh, the yeah. air siren warning, he knows that that's going to attract more of them. Mm-hmm. And but also when the two of the the soldiers comes in, he makes sure that he that one of them sees him just enough to, and and, he, and that's even a gamble because the other one could have stopped and said, Hey, he's over here. Yes. But he, but he knew, or he had an inkling that this guy would just try or was thought that he would macho man it and just go after him himself. Yeah. And that's what, and then he was able to take him out and then lured the, the, the captain or whatever back to him. And, and, you know, and that's whenever the, the rage zombies are already there and ready to take him out. Rock so. and roll. Uh, Mark, uh, a man walks into a bar with a giraffe. They both get pissed. The giraffe falls over. The man goes to leave, and the bartender says, Oi, you can't leave that lion here or there. And the man says, No, it's not a lion. It's a giraffe. <laughs> and then Mark, uh, Jim remains silent just looking at him uh, as he takes his mask off, and Mark says, Completely humorless. You two should get on like a house on fire. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't blame Jim because, like, just imagine his headspace. He's like, what the fuck happened while I was in a coma? I feel yeah. like shit right now. My head is pounding, and you're telling me some stupid ass, you know. Dad uh, joke. Dad joke, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jim later on in the movie, oh, great Valium. Not only will she be able to get to sleep, but if we're attacked in the middle of the night, we won't even care. I love or that. not only will we, yeah. Yeah, I love that for us. Let's <laughs> Everybody, Prince Valium. I'm sleeping with Prince Valium tonight. <laughs> Uh, Selena, have, uh, by the way, in that scene where they're all in that, like, which is a cool scene anyways, the ruins or whatever, looked like Roman ruins oh, or something. Beautiful. In English. Uh, 
I know that they don't get attacked. I've seen this movie enough times, but I am on edge the entire time Thank that you. they're in that area. Okay. I, I'm so glad. I am 100% with you on that. And Jim has a dream that he's attacked. Or not attacked. He has a dream he's alone. Yeah, he's alone again, and he's screaming for him, and they've left him. That's that's what he dreams. In that dream, did you see the sheep running away? Yes. I thought zombies were coming. Yeah. I mean, and... And but the entire time I'm like, oh god, they're doped up. They're not. Mm-hmm. And if if one of them runs around, and and I kept thinking honestly too that that was where Frank, you know, got the drop from the, yes, the you know, from same. above. And and I was just like the entire time I'm like, fuck, just you're yeah, don't sleep out in the open. They even mention it in the movie. They're like, this is not a good idea. Yeah, and not only that, they had a fire. <laughs> True. They had a I, mean, fire. I was like, it would be one thing. Now, hear me out for a second. Did you not see fucking houses around that? Am I crazy? I swear I saw cottages. There might have been. And here's the thing, especially when you watch, watch 28 Weeks. Uh-huh. Like seeing the mob in the countryside and what they can do to a place that's, that's even boarded up. I mean, it makes you even more like, oh, God, like how did they even survive this? Because they were out in the open. Like, you know that it just took, like, a random rage zombie, like, walking by that would start screaming, drawing the rest of them. And yeah. Then you know, there they are. Like fucking Banshees in Left for Dead, where when she starts screaming, everyone starts following. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Selena uh, talking. Uh, have you got any plans, Jim? Do you want us to find a cure and save the world or just fall in love and fuck? Plans are pointless. Staying alive is as good as it gets. She's not wrong. Uh, no, she's she got a point, and they do... They do the fucking part, so they mm-hmm. do at least complete that. Yeah. Uh, Selena, Hannah, it's okay. He's not infected. Hannah, but I thought he was biting you, and then Jim kissing. I was kissing her. Are you stoned? And then Selena says it's a long story because she is stoned. And and that whole scene leading up to that, the reason that she's stoned, man, that is so dark. I like, know. Literally on the verge of getting the shit raped out of him. And, you know, and then uh, Selena's basically like, here, I... I Hopefully you won't remember any of mm-hmm. this and this will help you just get through it because we have no hope. And I'm, I'm just, yeah. Making you not sleep. I'm making you not care. Yeah. And it, man, and, and it makes it worse too. When Jim comes in to save them because, uh, Hannah is like, or is out of it. And then she gets chased by one of the rage zombies. And that scene, man, that's oh, powerful yeah. too, where she gets behind the mirror. That was and good. Like it, and it's like sitting there clicking its teeth. Like right yeah. on the other side. Oh God. <laughs> that's a good and i'm like i wonder if the mirror saved or not because it was hiding her but because he was seeing himself and he's like that's a zombie i'm out of here yeah well i mean that is how he it saved her but if if her legs had been spotted which is that's another thing she did she had to raise her legs up yes. and like in this i mean your core you have to have pretty good core mm-hmm. uh, muscles to be able to do that in a dress <laughs> and heels i think um but yeah that uh, that said that when they get to this manor, like, I mean, and I, I know that Romero started this uh, with Day of the Dead, talk, showing how bad humans can be in mm-hmm. the apocalypse, uh, but I feel like this movie cemented it for everybody. It's like, yeah, humans are probably worse than what you're fighting, so yeah. you might not want to go into that building with quote-unquote good guys because they probably have ulterior motives, and you're probably fucked if you do. Yeah, I don't know. I just saw the cottages, and I'm like, there's clearly nothing around. Uh, they have that car that's farting the entire way they're driving, so it's not like it's quiet, you know? Yeah. Nothing came out, but then again, at the same time, he had that scene in the fucking cafe where there was the kid, and, well, I don't know. That kid, by the way, is the only rage zombie that speaks, well, outside of Alice in the second movie, but she's not a rage zombie. But that kid actually says words that no other rage zombie besides that kid says anything. I didn't hear him say anything. What the fuck? He says, I hate you, I hate you, is what he says. Wow, he's filled with rage. Yeah. (laughs) Literally, okay. Uh, Frank, you'd never think it, needing rain so badly, not in fucking England. (laughs) And here's the thing, it rains all the time in England, right? It, well, the, the the terrible thing for him is it's pouring the rain, at, and that's another thing that Jim uses advantage at the end of it. He uses the rain as cover to mask his yes. sounds and stuff. 
uh, but it is pouring the rain at the end of the movie. And it's like, and, and poor Frank, he gets fucked over every which way in this movie. He would have probably died at the manor, to be perfectly honest, because when he heard, when he would have heard what they were going to do is to adopt yeah. his daughter, they would have killed him. But it's a good thing he died, yeah. He almost has an ending. Did you, you've seen, um, uh, the mist, right? The Stephen King mm-hmm. movie. Have, you've seen that, and you know the ending, the infamous ending of that movie, yes. where pop, pop. Frank is almost that ending in this. It's like because he sit, and what I mean by that is he gets so pissed that there's nobody at that um, uh, military blockade that he, you know, knocks the dead body and then causes the blood to fall down in his eye, and then he becomes rage zombie. Literally, just seconds after Oof. he does that they show up yes you know it's just it's almost exactly like the mist where it's the worst possible scenario looks like the world's over with and then the military guys show up and save the day quote unquote you know (sighs) they were so close but it worked out in a fucked up way but all that to say, Frank was fucked in another way. He was so worried. He, he was just like, well, we got to go to the military blockade because apparently it's not going to, you know, we're, we're going to die of thirst, you know. And and I'm not saying that that same part of England would have, you know, got got the rain. But as much as it was pouring, he would have got the rain he needed if he just stayed in the, in, you know, the building he was in. Yeah. I'll, I don't know how secure that building was, though, because even though they had the the shopping carts and everything blocking the entrances, those rage zombies got over them. Yeah, so. they were able to climb over those hella fast, and then they got up the stairs and everything. I don't know if the bottom had to be closed a specific way, and obviously he had that security gate that didn't allow them past, so that helped him. Yeah. You but know, I, I don't know how I don't know how secure they were in their apartment building, but regardless of that, he they might have had a better go of it if they'd stayed there. But that's you know, yeah, it seemed like everywhere where they were holding up had a lot of junk at the bottom that they had to climb over, and everything looked very compact, if you will. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't know, I couldn't make out with my eyes what I'm like. What's happening? Why is it like that? Well, part of that is the fact that they film this on like one of those mini cams back in the day and it, it makes a lot of the scenes i mean because they're cutting so quick with uh, also uh bet- back and forth with it's hard to see anything in some yeah. of the scenes okay i mean it adds to the tension but it also you're like especially if you blow it up and you watch it in like you know higher res you're like what the fuck was that pixelated mess of garbage that i just saw you yeah. know uh major henry west man this is a fucking oh god this is bad this is what I've seen in the four weeks since infection. Or no, this isn't the scene. This not yet. Okay. This is just him talking about, you know, his feelings on, you know, oh, the world's so bad. Uh, this is what I've seen in the four weeks since infection. People killing people, which is m- much what I saw in the four weeks before infection and the four weeks before that and before that and as far back as I care to remember. People killing people, which to my mind puts us in a state of normality right now. Um that's kind of your hint that like he's gone mm-hmm. emotionally and has no empathy for anything. Yeah, is he even really military? He is military. Okay, uh, but I mean it. But that scene gives you basically his view on things. It's like this is an everyday thing. This is what I saw whenever the world was functional. You know. Yeah. Was, um, this is the part that's the bad one. I promised them women, and Jim's like, what? And he's like, eight days ago, I found Jones with a gun in his mouth. He said he was going to kill himself because there was no future. What could I say to him? We fight off the infected and we wait until they starve to death. And then what? Uh, What do nine men do except wait to die themselves? I moved us from the blockade. I set the radio broadcasting and I promised them women because women mean a future. I hate to say he's not wrong and how he went about (laughs) it isn't right, Uh, especially when you're talking about a, a teenager. And not a 17-year-old. We're talking a 12 to 15-year-old max. I would say at best she was 13, 14 years old. At best. But it would only be worse if they were there and they see her and Jim and they know that they're fucking fucking, to say the least. And they're just salivating. It's like somebody eating steak and they're over here fighting, protecting everyone. And for what? They get nothing. Um... And I I feel some bit of sympathy for Henry because he's like, I want them to be able to have the will to keep fighting and keep not only keep fighting, but keep living. 
Yeah. As a team, they benefit everyone when they're alive, you know. But are there going to be women, and is there a future, you know? Yeah, but come to Aurora, all they know, that, that the city behind, I mean, whenever you, that's another thing I love about this movie is the visuals. The city behind that military blockade is done. Like, mm-hmm. it is ghost. It's a ghost town. So they know that everything around them is just done. Like, I mean, and, and, and so they're at that, they've swallowed the black pill. Basically they're like, this is it. We're the only ones left. If any women shows up, that's our only chance to basically restart the population. Yeah. Which is, Oh, it's disgusting, but I I don't know. I don't know how you rectify that situation. Um, you do the right thing and don't rape women. Well, I mean, that's one way, but I mean, on the one hand, you're sitting there and you're just like, it's so cold and emotionless. But again, they, he's already hinted at the part at the little dinner party they had when the eggs were off before that, that he's, he was already emotionless before the apocalypse happened. I mean, because he had seen so many people kill, you know, each other that it was just, I mean, it, none of it affected him anymore. Yeah. Uh, but that's one thing about the dialogue in this movie. I mm-hmm. mean, there's when it hits it, it fucking, it's a sucker punch. Yeah. I mean, it's, they, they save the, I mean, they don't, there's not a lot of extraneous bullshit in this movie. Then a normal person would have looked at that quote and been like, oh, like, how could you even think about that? No, how could you not be thinking that that is potentially some, a danger that you would face in this, you know? Yeah. And I mean, it's. And he's and he's also looking out for his man, which there's a some there there's some as sick as it is to yes. say there's something noble about that. One hundred percent. You know, he's looking out for them because that was his that's his whole job now is to make sure that his men are taken care of. I would never want to bring my daughter in this situation. I would not want to be a survivor and walk into a situation where there's a bunch of men and it's me and my daughter. Nope. Mm-mm. Because, and I wouldn't be able to empathize. I wouldn't be able to be like, I get it. Like, you know, they've been out here. They're protecting us. Yeah. I wouldn't feel that way at all. No, I mean, you, you it puts a whole new person. I mean, it's one thing for guys to imagine what they would do in the apocalypse. It's a whole other thing for women because when society goes back to the way it was, life was not good for women. mm we, we all know this. We're it's so oppressed thing. now. No, we're not. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. It's like, you know, the bullshit feminists now that talk about how these microaggressions and, and how, you know, it's like, do you realize where you was at? I mean, have some perspective about how the world is versus how it was. You yeah. Know? <laughs> uh, we've kind of talked about some of this stuff already, but visually, I mean, even though it's shot on that shitty camera, it kind of adds to like a documentary feel to it, which makes it feel, feel more realistic. So I know why they did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just kind of sucks now because we don't have a good visual version of this movie to watch on higher def TVs. Yeah. Like it was fine back in the day when this movie came out because the TVs wasn't that high def. But when you try to watch it now from a, even a DVD, which there's a whole discussion that we've had oh, all, yeah. all there about how this is not available anywhere. Don't try to stream it because it ain't out there. Uh, and that's why physical media is important, folks. You want to preserve these movies. But if you try to watch a DVD now on a 4K of this, it there are li- there, there's one scene where they're driving. And it pans out, and it shows like these, uh, like wildflowers, lilacs, whatever they are, out in the field. They look like an impressionist painting now because of how okay. pixelated they look. Oh my god, that's so funny! We did not watch on 4K. We did stream it. Um, that's none of your business how we got it. But <laughs> yo ho ho, off to the pirate seas we go. <laughs> Which everybody's like, this is why I'm a pirate now, <laughs> you know, when everyone's like, it's not available on physical media, which where the, what is their excuse for that? Um, they said, oh, Disney lost access to it. Yeah, uh, Disney's a bullshit company like they they I think they finally realized that if they want to make money now, well, they, they were holding off before because they were like, we can. And now that they're in financial situation, you know, that they're in. They're like, okay, we might need to release some of this on physical media and get some money that way since we're not making money any other way. 
and they've they've gotten smart and they've actually handed it off to Sony, who is really good at, at oh distributing, media. yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that we get a lot more stuff now, especially the Fox catalog, which is a damn shame. Between the Fox and Miramax stuff, there are so many movies that we do not have on 4K because uh, Disney was holding on to them and like, yeah, we don't think that that should ever be released again. And it's like, are you going to put them on Disney? No, that doesn't fit our brand. It's like, so how do Where we watch Where are you these? going to? Are you going to open up? What is is it Miramax that did Nightmare Before Christmas or what was it? Um, there's a lot of movies that Miramax did that, that, I mean, like, uh, Scream, one of the Scream, Scream 4 still hasn't got a 4K, and I think there's some kind of rights issue there, because Sony owned all the Screams except for that one, and I don't know who has the license for it, but they, but it's, it's, deep, or Blu-ray's the best you can do with that one, but at least it's got a Blu-ray. This movie doesn't yeah. have... It just has the DVD. That's yeah. all you got. And if you can find it. If you can find it. And I think there's people that are fucking burning and selling, you know, burnt <laughs> copies of it, whatever. However oh, you I, get I, it. I found I found a website that has both it and 28 Weeks Later on Blu-ray that's been burned. It's not wow. an official site. Yeah. But if you want to get them, just uh, take your sloppy seconds is all I'll say. Exactly. <laughs> they're promising that they're going to come out with, you know, physical media, but they cannot figure out the details of, well, Disney had it, but now they can't legally own it. And now this place has it. So they're going to try to distribute it, but there's really nothing being said. And then there's the rumor that, oh, while well, 28 years later is coming out, which when would that be released? <sighs> I don't know, two years from now, when, when when that's supposed to come out? I don't even know at this point. No, it'd be 2032, wouldn't it? Um, no, 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 it'd be 2030. They, they surely have to be releasing that before then. Yes. I don't think Killian Murphy would be. He's supposed to have signed on and agreed to that one. I mean, oh. what, what the current rumors are. He'll be back. Okay. So um, that's where we're at right now, though. But. Visually speaking, this movie, I mean, I think we said it right before we started recording, or I said it to you, this has the best representation of an apocalyptic feel, or uh, amongst the best of about anything out there. When he wakes up, and the way that London, or I, I'm assuming that's London, looks, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, it's just like we talked about with some of the scenes from Omega Man, and, or, and uh, Last, Last Man on Earth, it gives you that creepy, like, okay, the world is empty vibe, you know? yeah until it's not empty and then you're like I wish it was empty again <laughs> cuz I don't like what's here <laughs> I don't yeah no that was that was horrible I, the thing that sucks is that you, you went into this movie know what you knowing what you were going to watch so when you see him in these apocalyptic streets and he's like help hey and you're like shut the fuck up why are you so fucking loud <laughs> yeah he keeps yelling he's like anyone hello hello like, you're gonna be one of them here in a minute sir um, I, he's just lucky that the majority of the, the rage infected by that point were s mostly starving to death themselves yes. and were like out of the game. I mean, cause if they had been like Don had to deal with in 28 weeks at the beginning of the movie, he would have been fucking toast. That's yeah. all there is to it. <laughs> but I mean, but the movie is so creepy at the beginning of it. And it, I mean, and it, it doesn't really get any better because everything's run down. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell. Yeah. And when they get and when they get to the mansion, and especially if you know what's going to happen at the mansion, it, it it I try to remember the first time I watched this. When they get to the mansion, you're like, oh God, they're saved. That feeling of hope goes away real real quick. fast, <laughs> real fast. But everything in this movie looks run down. It's got the ap apocalyptic vibes. They they did a great job. Yeah, um, Reverend, I'm gonna. I have to mark this down. I need to get some sugar. I my sensor <laughs> is renewing, so it's okay. not really. And I'm guess I'm getting an insulin dump. I need to get some sugar real quick. So okay, I'll be right back. I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. All right. What uh, story wise, we've already talked about it, but I mean it's. It's a functional story. Uh, it's the best way to put it. Like, I mean, it's they they do such a good job of like working in little things uh, throughout the movie that it's. I mean, it, it's it's. I mean, for its minimalism, it, it it's very effective. I think the minimalism that you literally just mentioned is what makes it so good because it's simple, but it's so fucking scary. You have an outbreak. It rips apart. This country, 
town? The uh, country, the the entire country. Yeah. Um rips apart the country. There are survivors. They're barely surviving. To say the least, there is a huge threat. And the simplicity of, well, going back to the basics, if you will, of, sur- <laughs> it's not simple because the little things that they do to survive aren't exactly the best. I mean, for instance, one of the things they were able to do they were able to stop at a store, but not everything is good in that store. Which, by the way, did you notice the apples in that store? No, I didn't pay attention to them. It's 28 days later, and they're grabbing apples that look fresh. One of the few things that didn't go well. Well, I can see that to a certain extent, but uh, this is a sad statement on uh, you know our current you know world. They add so much preservatives in the produce that's that's I've had apples in a bag here at the house that have lasted way longer than they should have if they if they hadn't had everything added to them. Okay, and I was hoping for that. I was like, well, it's only been twenty eight days. Um, the eggs that were bad at the compound or at the mansion. Yeah. What happened? Was it eggs that they got from the store? It. I think, I mean, it almost was like there was eggs or that mansion had quite a bit of like supplies and they were like, and, and, and they were, and I want to say that they might've even been powdered eggs at that, but something was wrong with them. Yeah. But, um, Um, I think the, uh, the only scene that really stands out is being like, I mean, and, and this, it's such a good tension filled scene, but it's, it, it makes you. I don't know. I mean, and they even bring it up in the movie, so they call it out. Is the decision to drive through that tunnel? It's oh, like, oh yeah, this is not a good idea. Don't fucking do this. Did they have to? No, well, they they had another route they could have taken because he mentions that, but it would have added more time and possibility of them running out of gas if they tried to do it. Okay, which whew, fuck. Um, also was a good scene though. Good tension scene, I think. I understand why they had to do it, but also was a good scene to show how quickly that little girl can change a tire. Her dad trained her. That and whenever the rats show up, that's like a one jump scare. But then they're like, why are the rats running? And then you see in the background, like the right, the, the shadows for the rage. It's like, Oh fuck. I was worried that the rats could uh, carry the rage virus, which they probably can. They probably can. And I was worried about that too, because I mean, you know what? Well, they established in the movie, I think it spread through primates, so maybe they were lucky in that sense that they couldn't, but there's a lot of viruses and illnesses that are, you know, spread to humans that come from rats. Okay. And I mean, rats are used in experimentation quite a bit for that reason, so it makes you think rats might be like, you know, in, in, a, in a very terrible world, those rats would have carried the rage virus and there would have been no chance no of No chance surviving. of survival, 100%. Okay, so primates, so there's monkeys, humans, what else? But You school me like I'm a kindergartner. Well, I mean, it's pretty much that. I mean, there's, you know, like all the different, you know, versions of monkeys, gorillas, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a chimpanzees, that sort of thing, which, God almighty, can you imagine a chimpanzee is... It, you've heard the story about the woman who had her face ripped face off. Face ripped off, her, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine a rage-filled chimpanzee, like, with her strength, like, if they were out on the street? You'd be... I mean, that by itself is scary enough. I mean, humans are scary, but, I mean, yeah. chimpanzees have a strength that we don't we don't have. Oof. Okay. Or size, at least. Well, then I like the fact that it's identified that primates are the prime uh, way to transfer this virus. I shouldn't say transfer, but a uh, host, if you will. And that's chimpanzees at the beginning of the movie, which, yes. I mean, explains why they were able to break out the way they did. But uh, it, it's not, I don't think it's said in the movie. It's just, it, it's, it's something I read in the trivia because they were trying to base it on Ebola, which is spread only through primates, okay. you know. I, I, I like it. Um, I like everything that was forced to happen in this movie by the danger of what could potentially happen. Um, Fast-moving zombies, you don't really stand a great chance, where slow-moving zombies, you kind of have a little more reaction times and things like that. Um, uh, slow-moving zombies in a world that doesn't know about zombies present a situation like in Romero's films where you uh, laugh it off or, or you, you 
you know, it's like, you know, whistling through a graveyard where you kind of ignore it because you can for a bit until it's too late to ignore. It's like the creeping doom. Yeah. Uh, rate or you fast zombies. It's, it's fight or flight. And mm-hmm. if just like they say in World War Z, I'll give them credit for this. If movement is life, if you're not moving, you're probably dead because no matter how much you barricade a home, if something is willing to break its mm-hmm. body against your defenses, I mean, outside of you just, cu- uh, you know, walling off your entire property in stone and hoping that they don't climb on top of each other, yes. which we'll get to. Get into. That's the only, that and like metal shutters, like that's the only two things they can't break through. Well, not only them, they have rage so bad, they can't really feel the pain because they're enraged with this virus that is just making them just want to spread. And only that. They're not eating you. They're not tearing you apart. They're- no, they're 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 not. They don't. They're so rage filled they can't even eat. That's Mm-mm. the one benefit to these zombies is that if you wait them out, you know, uh, they will starve to death because they don't. They're so filled with. And if it's like, and, and they don't say it's rabies based, Mm-mm. and at least not in this. They do in World War Z. If it's rabies based, they can't even drink water because, which is a whole other thing. They don't mention they have to drink water or they would be dead way before this. So they at least know to drink water with a rage virus or to do, they have to, I mean, because human beings can survive for weeks without food. Yeah. You can't, you can only survive three days without water and you're dead. Stay hydrated, bitches. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're smart enough to drink water. So it's not got the water phobia that rabies would have. But they, I mean, but they're, they're but they don't think to eat. Do we know all. in the trivia is their organs still working? Uh, it doesn't say, but yes, they're they're humans for all shape, intents and purposes. Because if you notice in the movie, it doesn't take headshots. If you can damage the, their, if yes. you just damage what would kill a human, you kill them. Okay, would I become a rage zombie with diabetes? Uh, you would become one, and you would probably die quicker. That's than what the I was thinking. Zombies. Yeah. Yes. Um, and if you notice uh, the way that they portray it in the movie, I think it's really the only the only people who are out in the streets that are the rage zombies attacking everybody. At least after the first initial few days, are the people who were healthiest before they got turned because the fatties are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Is you there know, a lot of? I don't think there's a lot of fatties in the UK. Am I crazy? There, there's, there's not. Okay, but I mean, clearly Frank was, uh, you know, plus size individual. Yes. Um, so he they're out hefty. there. It's just, but I think that they would have probably, uh, you know, they would have probably succumbed to some other illness before then. Yeah. Uh, so go, I want to go back to again. We talked about minimalism. There, you know, very simple things happening in this movie. Not a lot of people alive. That made no. it simple and minimalistic. Yeah. Um, yep. Probably d- helped with the budget a lot. Um, it doesn't, they did a great job with visuals. We've already talked to storyline and making this film look like it was a quality film. Now we talked about being on, you know, 4K and everything. That aside, you have to admit this movie doesn't look low budget. No, I mean, it's it's not. It doesn't even look like an independent film. You can tell that it's a it's a studio film mm-hmm. um, at the very least. It's just that the way they filmed it, and like I said, it does add to a documentary film, making it feel more realistic. It's just that in the process, it hasn't aged well on like yeah. new, uh, higher fidelity TVs. Yeah, I don't. You know what? I don't have a really high res TV. I mean, I do. We have the um, oh god, I forget what brand it is. I love them so much. They work very well with our phones. But we haven't gotten real heavy into the 4K and the quality of what we're getting and frame rates and things like that. So we're still watching on a little bit older technology. So I haven't noticed. Again, that's me, though, who allowed me to be on this show. One, that's you, Reverend. Two, um, my hubby, I think, would notice. Well, the funniest thing is, is that movies like this benefit from actually being played on a DVD player uh, connected to probably one of the older like CR TVs, like yeah. the big fat ones, you know, that weighed a ton. Oh my god! Because and it looked good on those. I mean, yeah. it did. You know, it just when you start blowing it up, it, that's whenever it starts okay. to, to break down. And I can't handle really big TVs either because my eyes, my eyes. 
oh no, my eyes. Yeah. Uh, the, the funniest thing is, is that when it comes to 4K, you know what looks the best? Hmm. It's like old movies. Oh, like really? Black remastered? and white, if they are remastered okay. because they were put on film, which has a very high fidelity, it just has to be, re, you know, redone for, you know, modern technology. They look like, I mean, brand new movies. They look better than brand new movies. They There are some old 4K movies of like, you know, even like, say, Frankenstein, Dracula and all them, they look better in, in a lot of ways than like the newest Marvel movies do because they actually downgrade the image in those Marvel movies uh, through their filming process to where it's like 2K and then they blow it back up to 4K and you could tell the difference. Whereas the old movies are straight film that have been remastered from the negative and they look perfect. Yeah. You know? It's insane. But anyways, this movie looks terrible because it was filmed on a 16 millimeter camera uh, or actually it's filmed on a mini DV camera, then reprocessed on 16 millimeter. Ooh. So in theory, since it was on film, they could make it look some better, but it's never going to be a looker. It, okay. it just isn't. It hasn't bothered me yet. I'm not saying that it doesn't bother people. I'm just glad I haven't noticed it. So, um, uh, other than that, though, everything top notch. Are we ready to move into acting? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Killian Murphy. Killed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why he is, you know, went on to do so many other things. And I mean, he is just, he's very understated as Jim. There's, a, there's not a lot of speaking parts, mm -hmm. but his, his visual and he's funny. And I think we've mentioned this before about him. He's one of the few men that has RBF. Oh yeah. He straight up has it, but like it works for Jim. Like it, it, you imagine a character in his situation, he's going to have RBF, like, all the time, you know? Yeah. He has RBF, but he doesn't look like he's a mean person. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't know he how he He, he looks off. like he's a nice, caring person, but he's got the look on his face like, I'm introverted, don't talk to me. Like, he's got that look about him, you know? Do you think his <laughs> nickname should be Killing It, Murphy? Because I feel like that's what he does in all of his films. He really does. I mean, he, uh, like... He is so good in Oppenheimer. It was, I mean, I think he got the, the win for that, but he deserved it because he does a really good job acting in that. His face um, is so funny. I just want to see real quick um, for Killian. The funniest stuff for him is when he's doing interviews because if he's not being directly like question, like if he has like another person from the movie beside him and they're talking, the look on his face is like, kill me, kill me with fire and put me out of my misery. That's so funny. <laughs> Um, I want to see, okay, um, I want his early life. Okay, early life and education. He was born, okay, I don't want to know when he was born. His grandparents was raised Catholic. Big shocker, he's Irish. Um, he was not in sports. Uh, let me see, he was raised Catholic. Shut up, insulin pump, I know I'm low in sugar. I'm better now. I ate, I ate sugar. Um, let me see, secondary school, he did well academically, but often got into trouble, sometimes being suspended. He decided in his fourth year that misbehavior was not worth the hassle. Um, and then he was a major part of the school's curriculum where he found artistic pursuits, assuming acting and drama. Uh, he got his first taste of performing in secondary school. I don't know what secondary school is, if that's like middle school. Really? I don't. I don't know. He said secondary school. I don't know because for oh, out second, here, secondary school for them is high school. I believe. Okay. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. So he was in drama. Um. Okay. Late teens and early twenties, he sang and played the guitar. Uh. Let me see. I just want to see how he got into acting. He began studying later at University College Cork in 1996, but failed his first year exams because he has no ambition to do it. Uh. Let me see. After seeing Corda cor, cor, Corcas, cor, Corca Dorcas, what the hell? I don't know what I'm saying. A stage production of A Clockwork Orange, directed by Kiernan. I don't know who that is. He began directing his attention to acting. His first major role was in the UCC Drama Society's amateur production, Observe the Suns. Okay, so that's this is all like just stage acting. So that's probably how he did it. He probably started out in the stage, and then, like, he probably – some director, maybe Danny Boyle who for Sunshine, was like, hey, that guy's pretty good in that. Let me cast him in a movie. Now, that being said, what makes Killian 
a good actor. He was interested in in high school. A lot of people do high school drama, and then sometimes they go on to college, etc. It doesn't look like he did any college acting. I'm I haven't read further into his bio, but. It doesn't look like he did. So somebody picked him up and said he's a good actor. Is it something that's natural? Is it his face? Is it his, is it high school? Did that, like, like, what do we think that it is? Is he really a good actor? Or is it just something about his posture and how he holds himself? I think some people have a talent for it. And I think that he, he did and that, and he didn't have to have extra training. I mean, it's, it is a job you can be trained into, I mean, uh, all the Hollywood elites can say what they want to now. I mean, because they they act like it's you know a, a you know a, a glorified it's a job that nobody can really get into. Mm-hmm. And and I won't take this away from you. Have to have a presence, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what he wanna, has. And and he and he has that. But he also has a talent for like. I mean, in this movie, he you know he he acts without like you know i mean with his face with his gestures the way that he carries himself like that scene where he walks out of the uh you know the diner and he's just killed the kid and like she's asking him what's going on like he says everything about himself in just the way that he acts reacts to her in yeah that scene. nothing he says like he yeah uh, he says like one word to her but the way that his face and the way that his body like he's moving like it's it's like uh you know the world's fucked you know like he 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 sells all that with just the way that he is acting in that scene. Yeah, I, I that scene kind of bothered me because I'm like, why are you, what do you want to see? What are you trying to find? He said, we haven't had cheeseburgers. What What did I, you think? I think he wanted normality, and he realized that hmm. there is no such thing anymore. That that proved it to him, when he, especially when he had to kill a kid yes. a, as part of his hazing into this world. Because up to that point, I don't had he ever, had he even killed any of the rage zombies. No, I don't believe he did. He's barely survived, and that's Henry did ask him one of the quests. I'm surprised you didn't, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's read like it. who? Yeah, who did you kill? And he's like, I had to kill a, a yeah. kid, you know, or whatever. Uh, Henry specifically says, "You're alive. You had to kill somebody to make it to where you are today," which is yeah. so wild to think about, you know. Yeah. The other thing is you got to get Killian Murphy in this movie. There is a scene where he is letting it all hang out, and he's it, it's not like he's got a third leg hanging out. So, I mean, kudos <gasps> to him for be, being willing to do what it took. I didn't see know, his winky-do. Was it a blink and uh, you'll miss it? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. No wonder I didn't see it. I did notice no, well, he had a flat the, butt. I'm, I'm saying that you didn't see it because you probably wouldn't have seen it. Okay, hold on. Let me take a look. Hold on. Oh, God, I spelled his name with a K. Um, we can move on to Naomi, though, if we're done talking about Kelly. Uh, she, she's good. She's I mean, amazing. she's really good in the role, too. I mean, she, I mean, you know, like, uh, so Disney has this thing now where it's like, you know, girl bosses. Girl bosses, girl bosses. That's all, I mean, Hollywood in general, but specifically them and, and Madam Webb from Sony. Uh, if you want a girl boss, make make it like Naomi. She sell, she's vulnerable and feminine in the scenes where, you know, she needs to be. But she is a badass, and she takes charge uh, when, when she needs to and is a strong female character. And I feel like none of the current girl bosses that they have in any of the, the recent movies that we've watched where they try to make a, a whole thing out of women power, rah, rah, none of them have hold a candle next to the representation she gives for that, that type of character in this movie. Yeah. Um, she's, I didn't realize how much things she has been in, but she deserves every role she has gotten. The, the funny thing is that, okay. So they, they bring up, uh, whenever they did, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Wakanda forever. They they try to make a big point like this is our first like major uh, black female lead you know and all that stuff which none of them are first they're yeah. not it's like you know did they forget about her character in this I mean she's technically not the lead but she's damn close enough and she is a strong character in this she's movie. literally a strong independent black woman she's stronger than Jim if it wasn't for her Jim would be dead at the beginning of the movie yeah um, I mean speaking of Jim and going back to Killian. How tall he is? How tall is he? How tall do you think he is? 
Looking at him, I would say at best six foot, and I don't even give him that. I would say five ten. Okay. Looking at him, five seven. He's fucking five <laughs> seven. He is Tom Cruise's height. He, I, I figured is it me? he kind of looks like he's on the shorter side. I didn't think that. Movies. I thought he looked tall. I know he's skinny, <laughs> so there's that. I did see his winky do. Apparently, it was at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, it's right when he's in the coma at the beginning of it because he he has the gown on and it when he flops it to the side, it's it's all hanging out. All right, well, I'm gonna put myself out there as a woman that has seen many a wieners in her life and has um from big to small, and I have seen some very small, at least one very small one in my life. Um, I don't think it's small. I think it's normal. Uh, I well, think he's got I, a lot of bush going on though, for sure. Well, yeah, there's there's. That and I'm whatever. I'm, I didn't focus on it. I'm just saying that he doesn't. He doesn't have a hog's leg. He so, doesn't. I mean, and half the time, the guys are fluffed before they're done in films, and he was not fluffed in this film. No, he wasn't at all. That there, thing was. It, it was, you know. I mean, like you would imagine, somebody who just woke up and their their body shutting. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And which is how he was supposed to look. Uh, look <laughs> at ladies. The guys you see in films that look like they're they got a little bit of a hog. They're right and tight because they were fluffed. Uh, Killian in this movie, he has been left hang- left and loose. Okay, <laughs> to say the least. So, don't be judging your men. I'm like just, I know Sean's not. Ju- I, I mean, reference not judging, but. <laughs> No, I'm not judging at all. I'm just saying I'm, I'm giving him props because, like, yeah. every other movie you see where a guy's willing to do that. They got a hammer. I mean, it's it's either they've got a prosthesis on mm-hmm. or they've got one that's, like, slapping their thigh, you know, and it's just like, okay, that's why they did it because there was no embarrassment there. That's, no killing was just like, who gives yeah. a shit? That I'm is dead. so fucking funny you know? because, like, I personally, like, yeah, you're right. You are 100% right, like, to – allow yourself to be seen like that and not have slapped it a few times. Good on him, you know, but I'm here to say, and who the fuck am I? Nobody, but you're, you're okay. Killian. You're, you're yeah. Um, Hannah is probably the weakest in the movie, but yes. she doesn't have as much to do. No, she doesn't. And they try to give her, but I think it serves her because she's a kid that's having to grow up in this fucked up situation yes uh so i think it does a good job of showing that where you've got i'm gonna guess 13 14 years old is what this girl is supposed to be in the movie i would say about 13 or 14 yes and so um that's actually younger than my my daughter but like to have to learn how to drive immediately to have to survive, know how to change a tire, all of these things she's having to learn just to fucking survive, not just to grow up. She's doing this for pure survival. And you don't really give a lot of responsibility to little girls that age because you're like, I, you know, yes, I want you to be able to survive, but also there's only so much I can teach you so quickly, you know? Yeah, and the the thing is, is that, like, she has the least lines of any of the, you mm-hmm. know, um, the primary stars in the movie and she, and, and, the, and they don't, and the ending comes so quick after mm-hmm. her father dies that she doesn't really have time to show you her full emotional range Correct. on that. They could have maybe cut to her a little bit more and emphasized that, but at the same time, did the movie need that? And would no. it have just kind of been like, why are you showing me this little girl crying about her dad when literally they're talking about raping her in the next room over, yes. you know, it's like, uh, they had, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, like the current, like directors and stuff, it's like you robbed her of her, you know, whatever. And it's like of her, you know, uh, ability to uh, uh, really get into that part. And it's like, yeah, but the, the story demanded that they kind of give her the short shrift on that. I I, mean, I think it was good that they did. I mean, she's just a little girl at the end of the day, and if this was a real-life situation, we really wouldn't be paying that much attention to her, which is sad. Like, obviously, people would be looking out for her if they're good people, of course, um, Yeah. to a degree, but also she'd really have to do a lot to kind of prove herself in the adult situation. Adults always are like, I got this, you know. Uh, rare is it that a teenager that age is like, I've got this. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, she can hold her own. We're going to be fine. You know, like nobody's going to put her on the night watch to make sure they can all stay alive while they're sleeping. No. And I mean, and, and honestly, it was her first film and they might have seen that she wasn't maybe the best actor in the group. So they might've kept her role to a minimum to a minimum to kind of keep, you know, like the, 
you know, the acting level up too. I mean, sometimes they do that because the problem with acting with children is that they're not, I mean, and, and 28 weeks has this problem to a certain extent is they're not always the best. Exactly. I, mean, I think she was okay. And I don't think she, she was, yeah, she didn't she take decent. away from the movie, but she also didn't add a lot other than the shock value that you realize is there when, you know, this this little girl is going to be used, you know, as a pin cushion. Yes. Uh, the guy who plays Frank, though, I mean, he's he's really good actor. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the Banshees of Inishir, and like he is a he's great at that character, and that as demented as that character actually is. Uh, he, I mean, he, I'll give him this. He's in the movie for, I mean, the shortest amount of time of any of the survivors. Uh, the very minute, and he stands out. Like, oh yeah, he I does. Mean, Emotionally, it's a loss introduced. when he's gone. Yeah. Uh, and you care about him. I mean, while he's in the movie, so they they did an amazing job of making you care about a character who's. I I don't even know how much screen time he has, but it couldn't have been more than like twenty minutes in the entire movie. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking thirty years. No, you're right. I think it's twenty minutes. I mean, at twenty thirty minutes, whatever. But yeah. I mean, out of the the full length of the movie, I mean, it's he's blinking, you miss it. He's gone. You know. I mean. Uh. And then, of course, the general, played by Eccleston. I mean, Eccleston, I mean, kills it as that character. I mean, so he stands out. Yeah. And then the music, which I think we talked about you were going to, you know, put in there, that theme song for 28 Days Later, and then they play it again in 28. I mean, they it's in the trivia. They use that song and other stuff now because it is so good. Like, That's... it has that it has that drive to it that just gives you, like, that terrible, I mean, like, you, you, when it plays, you're like, okay, the world's ending. Like, this is what this music makes me feel like, and that's what it's supposed to make you feel. So much dread when you hear that song. And imagine watching a film and you hear that, and you're like, nah, uh-uh. Yeah, it, What's coming it, it, 28 it conveys, days later? It conveys that emotion. Whatever that emotion is, it, I guess dread. It's just like, it, it's just like you know that the shit's about to hit the fan anytime that music plays. Yeah, I feel like ultimate dread is what I'm what I'm hearing or feeling when I hear that song. Uh, I would call it black pill because when that <laughs> song kicks in, it's like you feel like you just swallowed the black pill and it's and you're just waiting for the <laughs> everything to, to kick over. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, let's get into some trivia about this one. Uh, the film was shot almost entirely in sequence. Only pickups and a few reshoots were out of sequence. Another movie this season where they, just like uh, Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, where if at the beginning of the movie is when they filmed it. I, 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 I like that, and I know we've discussed the reasons why they have to do it the other way or whatnot, but I don't know. I, I, I prefer it. And it worked out really good. Yeah, I mean, it... It doesn't hurt if you can do it that way. It's just some movies, if especially if they rely on a lot, a lot of uh, outside scenes, or if they've got like, like we've said on previous podcasts, if they've got like contracts, you're filming in New York on these days, they can't get out of them. They've already signed. Yeah. Them. So and if it's the end of the movie, even though they've not started the principal photography photography on the beginning of the movie they they still got to shoot the end of the movie because that's what they got that's the window which is probably Uh, why they were like let's get some unknown names in here so we don't have to worry about schedule conflicts well schedule conflicts but and i and i've got in the trivia about how they got around filming this but that's part of the reason why they filmed it with those little digital cameras is because they actually shut down the streets of London and some other places in and very populated places in England to film this. And they only had windows of like yeah. maybe, you know, like hours at, at most. And so they actually had the local police filming for them with like, you know, the cameras, God you know, damn. To help them out. <laughs> um, this doesn't shouldn't surprise anybody. Athletes were cast as the infected because of how important physicality is to them. Danny what? Boyle felt that since athletes can do things that other people can't, they would be interesting uh, when w- translating the movements of the infected. So that's the reason his zombies are basically Olympiads because <laughs> they are the best of the best when it comes to like cardio and like their physical bodies being tuned up and ready for running and all that. I don't like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, when you're out and you see somebody doing the daily run in the morning, that's the guy that you better be ready to put a bullet into when the zombie apocalypse uh, yeah. started because 
that motherfucker is going to get you. That's not that's not a bad like I I'm gonna see them. I'm like I always fucking hated you anyways. <laughs> It's not going to be Fat Ethel who gets brought in mm-hmm. on a gurney and looks like diabetes is the only thing that runs in her family. No. She, she ain't going to get up and run no matter what Zack, Zack Snyder told you. <laughs> I mean, one of the first mainstream films to be shot entirely digital as opposed to with film. That's another reason why it's going to look bad when they blow it up. Because digital, you would think that digital would be easier to convert, Mm-mm. but it's not necessarily the case. It really isn't. I just feel like trying to fix the low quality, it would take so much patching and that it's impossible, which is, again, like you said, probably why we don't have this on any physical media anymore recently. Man, I think I think that's the reason it's been so long getting it to because they have to digitally remaster it to get it up to even DVD quality, not or I mean Blu-ray, not oh, even yeah. counting 4K. Leave 4K out of it. Just 1080p is going to be a stretch to get, on, get it up to that. Yeah. Uh, the hospital in the film is a real day hospital open only during the week. The trust managers of the hospital hired out the building, the filmmakers for the weekends and the productions paid the hospital directly, meaning the money from the filming went directly to the hospital's trust fund. Wow. Interesting. And how, how weird we're only open during the week. I thought the same thing. I'm like, you know, hospitals in the U S only exist for after hours. uh, Or I mean, you can get, I mean, emergencies any time of the day, but they yeah. primarily see when doctors are not in, you know, like yeah. weekends and after hours. Just, it's strange to think about they shut down their hospitals on the weekend. Yeah. And I've heard how other countries, it's like, if you're going to have an emergency, try to not have it on the weekend because they still have areas where they shut down. And I'm like, I, I am all for that. Don't get me wrong. You know, and I know there's places you can go if there's a real emergency. Obviously, this isn't the only hospital, but I do like that. Like, try not to be a fucking idiot on the weekends. Enjoy your weekend. It it makes sense for a country hospital that's just like a small community. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we we do have some of those around here where they might not be open, you know, as long. Because the bigger city might have one, and it's like a triage thing. It's like, you know, if you can't go there... 30 minutes up the road and, you know, go to the, the big one, you know, or whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. Uh, Ewan McGregor was actually the original choice to play Jim, but he and director Danny Boyle had a falling out at the time over the beach from 2000 in which McGregor was supposed to play the lead until he was replaced by Leonardo DiCaprio, but they have since reconciled. Uh, after that uh, didn't work out, the role was offered to Ryan Gosling, who had a scheduling conflict. Um, No. No. <laughs> No to both of them. I'm sorry. I like Ewan McGregor. I like Ryan Gosling, but it's a no from me. You You're, couldn't. You know have what's done... a weird? Uh, you know what's a weird, hilarious twist of fate? Huh? Ryan Gosling and Killian Murphy oh, were yeah. both opposite each other at the same time in the theaters with Oppenheimer and, and Barbie. And Barbie. And... <laughs> it's so not Death Holler related, but I am loving all the. Uh, all the stuff that is surrounding Ryan Gosling in terms of being Ken. And he's like, this is a movie about the women quit making it about me, but everyone still loves everything about Ken and relate. All the women are relating to Ken. Cause he's the one that's kind of being overlooked and everything. He's the, he's the abused one in the relationship. He's, and the yes. fact, and people made a big comment about how he sings, uh, that, that, uh, uh, whatever. It, I'm just Ken. What, no, not I'm just Ken. The uh, Matchstick Twenty or what? What's is that the name of the band? Uh, anyways, the, Matchbox you Twenty. Know, if Matchbox Twenty, that's why I was blanking on their name. If I want to push you around, I will. They were talking about how that's like a song. Uh, you know, him being misogynistic. No, the song. If you listen to how Rob actually sung it originally, is about him being abused, abused by his girlfriend. Yes, and now Ken is singing the same thing about Barbie. Yes. And it's so funny because it's like everyone talks about representation. And and in this movie, ironically, Ken ended up being the one representing women more, which I have not seen the film, so I can't, I can't relate. But this is from that, what that people just are telling makes me. You, that just makes you realize that the filmmaker, Greta Gerwing, I mean, she's she's don't I mean she's good. Yes. The other stuff, she fucking failed in Barbie because she made Ken more likable. Yes, than Barbie. she did, and that's the thing is like 
representation is not a bad thing in films. I think that there does need to be a representation to a degree, and I heard that Barbie did an okay job at that. Again, haven't watched it, but that being said, when everyone's like, we need to have all this representation for one group or one small minority or blah, 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 because they need... They, they probably don't because emotionally you can be representative, re- represented, excuse me. And it just, this, that, I think that just goes to show. You can see yourself. That's the thing that modern cinema has completely forgot. And I hate about the current like Gen Z, you know, notion of this. You can see yourself in people who are not you. They don't have to look like you. I, I don't know how many characters that I've seen in like, uh, I mean, I know this is still a white man, but like there are aspects of Andy Dufresne that, you know, and like the Shawshank Redemption, I've never been to prison. Yeah. I've never, you know, had to, you know, think about killing somebody that was, you know, fucking my wife. But like there are moments that he goes to in that movie that uh, most people can relate to, especially the friendship between him and Morgan Freeman. There was things about Morgan Freeman in that movie I can associate with because they're human beings. Yeah. You don't have to look like them. Um, and like, you know, these people are all the time. It's like, no, if I'm a, you know, black lesbian trans woman in a wheelchair, I got to have that in the movie. That just means you're a narcissist and you don't realize you can't empath- empathize with other people. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it means. I mean, um, but it's, it's, it's funny that Ken, uh, uh, just going back to Ryan Gosling is the, the person in that movie that is most recognized, or I mean that women are seeing themselves in more than actually Barbie herself. Oh yeah. I, I, I found it to be completely hilarious and I'm like, go figure, you know? And, and it's the character that if guys watch the movie and actually care about any of it, he's the, fu- he's the funny one in the movie. He's the one that makes it, you know, tolerable. I'll say that as somebody who's seen it. Yeah. I mean, every scene with America Ferreira in that movie is unbearable because she is the Latina who has been shit upon by white male society. And she even has a speech at the end of it about how women have been oppressed and how they've got to take back. And it's just like, it's this big, long tirade she has at the end of the movie it just the whole movie stops so she can have this speech oh, and you're God. like this this is shit like i did not need to hear you say this i mean if the movie did its job i would feel for you and and you wouldn't have to say those words like this movie like we said i feel for selena i get the idea that she's been through some shit before she saw jim and that's hardened her as a person and he brings her out of it by the end of the movie and that's that's human. That's that's a human it, thing. Yes, that's a human thing. I couldn't have said it better myself because she she was I was like, man, is this one going to be able to are we gonna be able to crack this one a little bit? But I really she needed that because for the longest time, well, she had that, uh, you know, other partner, for instance, I wouldn't say partner it was just another person that was alive. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a partner. It was just like a guy who was with her uh, that had survived with her, and I don't even know if they'd really been that close because he mentioned the way when he says that line. I mean, that gives you the, again the writing is so good. He gives you the 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 feeling that he has tried to make inroads towards Selena, and she has just been like a a wall against yeah. him. Yeah, and she know? has no emotional attachment, which is. She and she even has a line at the end of the movie that I left out of the quotes where she's talking about how, uh, you know, she's talking about Hannah and she's like, No, Hannah, and she's talking to Jim and she's like, Hannah is not all right. That's before they start kissing, by the way, yeah, because the tension builds up. But she's like, Hannah is not okay, we're not okay. Frank was part of our new family and he's gone now, so everything that we thought was everything about our new life that was going good is gone, yeah. you know. So that shows that she has let herself be you know, uh, you know, vulnerable that way. Yeah. And it's kind of backfiring a little bit because when you do open yourself up like that, you are susceptible to vulnerability. Yep. And, and it doesn't help that that's right before the, the, you know, pin cushion discussion goes on. The great becomes a topic. Because she needs to be emotionally stunted oh, to deal God. with that if it, if it went through the way it was going to. It's sad because she almost had, like, she's seeing um, the little girl. She's like, okay, well, I got to be strong for this little one. And she's just like, this is what's going to happen. She's not even fighting it, you know? 
yeah, she she knows that if she wails and and screams at the you know at the walls and the rafters, it's just gonna make things worse for Hannah. It's just gonna scare her more. So she has, yeah. to put, even though she knows that her own body's gonna be you know torn apart by this, she's got to put on a brave face so that the little girl has some you know some composure. About yeah. Um, and you McGregor just getting back to that you know trivia. I don't I don't know how I'd felt. I mean, he was in Train Spotting around this time, and I mean. I guess he could have pulled off something, but there, I, I don't know. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad Killian Murphy got a chance to do what he did. Yeah, I just can't see. I It's it's just unfortunate because Killian did such a good job. I should say it's fortunate, but uh, that it makes it to where you can't see anybody else making this work, no matter how good of an actor Ryan Gosling and fucking Ewan McGregor are. Those are some big-ass names right there that could they absolutely are. kill the role, but Killian killed it. <laughs> Uh, the crew filled all the necessary papers to destroy the Canary Wharf petrol station. That's a gas station for a U.S. Uh, <laughs> folks. But the police were unintentionally not notified. When the explosives were detonated, police sent fire brigades, although one was already present. And Danny Boyle resolved the matter after several hours. It cost 250,000 pounds total to film that. That's pretty low. But, like, how do you... Okay, paperwork was was filed to destroy the petrol station you couldn't do a fake one <laughs> they they wanted well the thing is is that i don't it would have probably been more costly to do a fake one at that time maybe when, yeah. digital effects remember this is the time when we had uh uh the scene in uh, house on haunted hill that looked like it was playstation 2 yes uh, material so cgi was shit at this time it would it's probably cheaper to have done it this way okay uh, Alex Garland and Danny Boyle felt the notion of the living dead wanting to eat people's brains was outdated. Love One of it. the original factors behind zombie movies was fear of nuclear power and its possible effects on people. Garland and Boyle concluded that one of the biggest fears that modern society uh, feared was disease, particularly Ebola and Marburg virus. So uh, Garland and Boyle were specifically inspired by such incidents as anthrax and bioterrorism, scares in London, and the spread of mad cow disease and foot and mouth disease in the UK. I like it. He, they're not wrong. They're not wrong, and, and it's funny. I mean, it's skipping ahead a little bit. It's funny that in World War Z, they kind of make a nod to this because, remember, there's a scene where Brad Pitt is fighting a zombie on a stairwell. It, it Some of its blood gets in his mouth, and he does the countdown over top of the edge of the building mm-hmm. just in case he starts to turn yes. because he says it got in my mouth. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I feel like it's a... It's like almost a wink and a nod back to this movie that he did that. I think so, too, because uh, that would be one of my fears. I've always thought that in a zombie movie, it's like, okay, if the saliva is yeah. is infectious, how does getting their blood on you not infectious? Exactly. In your eyes, in your mouth, it has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, the design for the symptoms of rage was based on Ebola, which is communicable in all primates, including humans, as it's transmitted through the blood. Ebola is, hemor- is a hemorrhagic fever, which leads to a rash, red eyes, and both internal and external bleeding. Uh, indeed, in 28 Days Later, The Aftermath, a graphic novel set between 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later, it is explained that the Ebola virus was being used by the scientists as a carrier for the inhibitor, which mutated into rage. So they explained in the books, the graphic novels, that they did use Ebola as like the carrier for it. Yeah. Uh, Killian Murphy's nude scenes were done on a closed set at his insistence. He didn't want anyone to see that dick. <laughs> dick. Dick. I mean. You gotta say it like goofy. <laughs> yeah, and he's not, look, and he's not fluffed, okay? Like, I get it. It's guys, yeah, it's well, cold I- in here. I don't blame him. I mean, you know, like I said, he didn't he didn't have a prosthesis on. I, there are some actors who have done that in movies. You might sit there and think, "Oh my God, how how did they end up looking like that?" And they're you know they're not. Uh, they they had an attachment so that it looks like they you know. And then everybody thinks, "Oh God," and then their partners are probably off to the side thinking, uh, "This is bullshit, that's yeah." You know? I'm calling bullshit on that. Um, also, did, okay. So on that note, did Ben Affleck have one in Gone Girl? I don't know if he did or not in that one. He, he was swinging a no, hammer. Probably. Everyone probably. was like, ooh, Jennifer Garland. Ooh, girl. And it's like, <laughs> what in the world makes you think that any tiny woman finds that, like, even remotely comfortable? 
Uh, there's there's some out there. I mean, they, uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess they work their way women. up to it. <laughs> Unless they're big white I don't women. Know why, I don't know why you want to feel like you're having birth every time you go to Thank have you. to do it. But. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that that just brought that up because I'm like, well, Killian Murphy looks what I would consider to be normal. I wouldn't say small, but I also wouldn't say big, you know. Ben Affleck, like I said, was swinging a hammer, and I'm like, mm, I don't know. I got questions now, and I ain't going near there's, that. There, there's pro- yeah, there's probably answers, but if you Google that, then your Google's going to be fucked for exactly. a good Exactly. I'm going to start getting all kinds of celebrity wieners, and I'm so good. Uh, the extras who played the dead bodies in the church were college students who volunteered to appear in the film. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Could you imagine? Could you, like, not even, we're not even college students. Because could you be like, somebody called us and like, hey, Death Holler, we have a role. Like, we want to put this movie. We're not paying you, but you get to be in a scary movie. And you guys can review it, blah, 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 or we'll let you go to the premiere. We would be like, hell yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, feel we, like I would. Listen, I, while you were on your break, I saw that uh, somebody said that the Rotten Tomato score currently for uh, uh, Late Night with the Devil is at 100%. Oh! Uh, we have said numerous times we wish to God they would have gave us the option to screen that. Because oh. We would have put out a podcast about it. Oh, I yeah, mean. definitely. <laughs> it's in theaters. It's not in theaters nearby. Or I guess it's going to be out in theaters. Or how are people seeing uh, it? Because I thought... They're getting screeners because because oh. the, the the one goth chick that that we both shared on there, Oriana Nicole or whatever, that's uh-huh. you know the one that talked about Twenty Eight Days Later and not being on you know any kind or anything but physical media. Mm-hmm. She got a screener for Late Night with the Devil. She's seen it, and I'm just uh. like, I'm jealous of you. I'm really yeah. jealous that you got to watch this. Well, I would say we need to post our TikTok a little more, but we don't know what's happening with that, so. Yeah, thanks to our politicians who are looking out for our best interest. Quotation they, marks. They, they they don't care if we have affordable health care or anything that really matters, but they will shut down the Tiki Talk, so good for them. Yeah. Uh, Alex Garland and Danny Boyle did a great job or a great deal of research into social unrest, drawing ideas from the things that had happened in Rwanda and Sierra Leone, such as the piling of bodies inside churches. Yes. That explains why there's dead bodies in the church. But drew the line at using any actual footage from such incidents in the opening montage. All footage featuring dead bodies, desecration of bodies was faked. Oh, fuck, son of a bitch, because I, me and, I was talking to Noah, and I was like, Babe, do you think, because what movie was it where it was real footage? Was it Dawn of the Dead? Night of the Living Dead, you said? Yeah, Dawn of the Dead, Zack Snyder. Yeah. Dawn of the Dead was Zack Snyder when that truck runs into the crowd. That was a real scene. From a, yeah. From Didn't you the say news. there were other scenes, though, too, where, like, a social just fucking whatever was going on? I think on, like, everything rights? in Dawn of the Dead was for, was real news footage, okay. like, and, in, in that movie. So when I saw this, I'm like, oh, that'll be sick. Is this real? Like, this looks like it could be real, and the hubby thought it was, and oh, this is a fucking disappointment. Uh, the shot where Jim sees the dead mother holding onto her dead baby is based on a photograph Danny Boyle saw the mass of curd bodies after they had been gassed. No shit. Um, the scene where Jim finds the money on the steps and picks it up was based on a photograph that he had seen of Cambodia after Paul Pot had been driven out. Uh, the shot of the notice board at Piccadilly Circus with the missing person flyers caused some controversy when the film was first released because some said it was insensitive to what happened in New York because, remember, folks, this was released right after 9-11. And there was a lot of people with missing persons posters because of what happened at 9-11 the film was shot prior to 9-11 although it was released afterward um and danny boyle said that uh, and i'll get to this in a second there's controversy on this statement danny boyle said that he uh, based the shot on a photograph he saw of an earthquake in china he said that if he'd made the movie after 9-11 attacks he, w- he wouldn't have shot that scene but here's the thing there is a lot of conflicting information about whether he shot this before or after in fact he's done he did both the scene in particular that he shot, because remember he shot it in sequence, was before 9-11. But he finished the movie after 9-11. So should he have kept it in? Yeah. This many years later, yes. Yes. Uh, at the time, I, I mean, I'm never one to censor or say censor, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think he should have kept it in. But if I think his excuse of saying, well, it was I, I wouldn't have filmed it, is kind of bullshit because yeah. he it was still, he, he could have edited it you know, out of the movie at that point, if he really wanted to. I mean, I think that 
it's un- clearly we are not okay with the events that happened with 9-11. That aside, what he had in his movie with the missing people's pictures and stuff like that, that was real. That would have been something that happened. Uh, obviously, I mean, it was based on an earthquake, you know. It's a thing that humans do. So, yes. I mean, if you watch it now and you're not in the moment of 9-11, I don't think of 9-11 watching that part of the movie. Mm-hmm. I think I would have up missing persons if my daughter, wife, whatever, had went out during the initial attacks and hadn't came back home. I would have put those up, you And know? we were young adults when 9-11 happened. Real young adults, like maybe barely adults. When 9 11 happened, was, I was the first semester of my undergrad, I think, mm-hmm. whenever, or maybe second semester when it happened. Yeah. It was, I started in the spring and then it was that following September. So, yeah, it was my second semester in college. I think I had just turned 20. So, not to age myself, but it is what it is, you know. Um, <laughs> that being said, you know, you, we, there's no way that he intended it. To be like that, but I do want to say one thing in relation to the pictures, but not related to the discussion of it being related to 9 11 or not. The kid in that photo was that the kid that was in the cafe in the hamburger place, the cheeseburger stand? It very well could have been. I'm not even, I didn't pay attention to that, but I mean, it would have made total sense if it had been. It yes. just popped up into my head right now because I got a good look at the kid and then I saw the kid in that picture and, or I remember the kid in the picture. And I'm like, holy shit, was that the same kid? Uh, so the scene where Jim and Selena celebrate with Frank and Hannah was shot actually on September 11th. Oh, shit. And Danny, and Danny Boyle said that it felt extremely strange to shoot a celebratory scene on the, that day. That's wild. Know? So the clarification is, is even though he said that he would have altered it, he wouldn't have filmed it if he... The, the the movie was mainly filmed before 9-11, uh, and it was filmed in sequence. It's a little bit disingenuous of him to say, you know, what it, how, that, oh, I would have been in the movie if I... You could have cut it out if you was really that concerned about it. Now, should it have been? No. No, it adds to the movie. It's another bit of visual storytelling. When he sees that scene, you get the emotional impact that people were... I mean, of the loss that people went through. It's a, it's a quick, good visual, I mean, yeah. in the movie. Um, it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, you know how that we've talked about, there's been several movies that were, well, Scream 3, for instance, remember they cut, uh, they changed the entire movie because they were going to have it to where Stu was recruiting teenagers to, uh, you know, do the scream killings and then, or from prison. And then it turned out there was a lot of school shootings around that time. So they completely scrapped the high school thing. And then went the idea of her have, of Sydney having a half brother. Um, so I mean, it's one of those things where I, you know, real life does intercede on some of these movies, and you might have had a better movie in retrospect if you'd stuck to your guns. But if you'd released it at the time with that, you know, the world kind of with that, you know, in that state of pain, it might not have went over too well. It yeah, kind of depends. Uh, Danny Boyle intentionally sought out unknown and obscure actors for the majority of the leading roles, as he wanted the film to be discovered and not rely solely on star power. Okay. Uh, they were all the main actors were virtually unknown outside of Frank. He'd been in quite a bit of stuff, but yeah, with Murphy and Huntley uh, having only had minor roles in films, uh, Harris that was Noah Huntley. Uh, Harris was only uh, ha- had only had uh, British television to her name, uh, and Naomi that is, and Burns. Uh, had only had one previous acting credit, uh, Megan Burns. Uh, the only famous actors of note were Brendan Gleeson, Frank, and Christopher Eccleston. Uh, all of the mansion scenes that involved upstairs rooms were filmed downstairs because the mansion's owner lived upstairs. <laughs> when Jim jumps through the window in the roof, he is actually jumping through a hole in the corridor upstairs down to the ground floor. Oh, my God. Uh, the film's climactic score in the house in a heartbeat, the one that we were just talking about by John Murphy, was used in the sequel 28 weeks later and later in films such as, and trailers for films such as I Know Who Killed Me, or I Know Who Killed Me, Kick-Ass, uh, for which Murphy also wrote the score, and a trailer for the video game Metro 2023 and a Louis Vuitton commercial in 2020, or 2012. <laughs> 
Can you imagine that song playing before a Louis? Why were how no. is that selling? How is that selling your brand? Because when I hear that, I'm like, oh, so this purse or these heels or whatever is the end of the world. That's what I get whenever I hear that song. So well, I don't. It's all about association because I mean I know <laughs> that this was after 28 Days Later, but for anyone who hasn't seen that film, I think you can. I think you can get away with using it. There's no way we could ever. Like we we're, we're done. We are we are soiled. We've we've seen the films. We've seen it used. We've seen what it's used for. We could not see this on a My Little Pony commercial and be okay. No. Mm-mm. We could not see some model showing us some new beauty skin product and not think of Raccoon City or something, you know? Because we're like, uh uh-uh. uh uh uh. The two scenes, the two scenes I think of when I hear that song is the scene in part in Twenty Eight Weeks Later, mm-hmm. Part Two where the rage virus starts back up and then you see all the rage zombies in the streets and everything's going to hell. And in the first movie, when Jim is on his way back in the rain to the mansion, that's what, that's the music that's playing yes. is, is, is that music. Cause it's, you know, shit's about to go down, you know? During yeah. That, that it's scene. the rain for me in the mansion, but it's also for me, it's the, uh, it's Rumpelstiltskin running away from his family, trying to get on that little <laughs> motorboat. <laughs> That uh, that yeah, will never exit. That scene too. Yeah, all, that'll <laughs> never exit my brain. Uh, the decision to film on DV uh, XL1 Canon cameras was both an aesthetic and a log- uh, logistic choice. Uh, aesthetically, Danny Boyle felt the harshness of the imagery suited the post-apocalyptic urban landscape and the grittiness of the film in general. He's he's right. Uh, in the production notes, he says the general idea was to try and shoot as though we were survivors too, basically like they were filming. You know. Yeah running behind Jim, which makes sense. Logistically, uh, producer Andrew McDonald claims that shooting with standard cameras, especially external scenes, would have been impossible. Like I said earlier, um, the police and local authorities were quite happy to assist us because we could set up scenes so quickly we could literally be ready to shoot with a six-camera setup within minutes, something we would not realistically have been able to do if we were shooting with a 35-millimeter camera, which makes a good deal more time to set up a single shot. So when they got these streets shut down... These little mini cameras were a blessing because they would just like pop them open and just start filming. And yeah. Go, you know, that's fucking wild. Uh, for the scenes on the motorway, the production got permission to shut down the M1, which is a major highway, on Sunday morning between 7 and 9 a.m. The police gradually slowed traffic in both directions, and then using 10 cameras, the filmmakers managed to capture a total of one minute of usable footage that they put in the movie. What the fuck? So they shut down the, the entire high, major highway for two hours, used 10 cameras, uh, captured uh, only a minute of useful footage in the movie. That's a lot of work for a lot of... But, I mean, you get the apocalyptic feeling from it, so it worked, I guess. Yeah. The symbol used for the film is obviously the international symbol for a bloodborne pathogen but, yeah. of biohazard. Uh, horror, horror novelist Stephen King... Uh, bought an entire showing of the fi- bought out an entire showing of the film in New York City whenever it first came out. Uh, he is a huge fan of the movie and actually paraphrases one of Selena's lines in his novel Doctor Sleep. Uh, the line in particular is, "He needs us more than we need him." Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> that scene that she and then Frank is like, "I heard what you said," and she's not wrong. You yeah. Know? Uh, and then Hannah has a good point. No, actually, you do need us because, you know, if it hadn't been for us, you'd been dead, yada, yada. She, she, it's a good ca- comeback. Uh, the scene where Jim, Selena, and Mark shelter from the explosion by hiding between the windows was based upon a photo that Danny Boyle had seen of a bomb blast in Northern Ireland. Uh, the tunnel scene was filmed in a new tunnel extension, which the filmmakers had special permission to use. Uh, it took two days to film that, by the way, the whole entire sequence in the tunnel. That seems excessive, but yeah. uh, they had to set up a lot. Yeah, but God damn, it, it's so, it feels so fast, it doesn't feel like there's any way two days. And the lighting makes it look like it's the same time. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there the was Bible- a lot of scenes of zombies. Like, that had to be the longest motherfucking tunnel in the world because... They changed a whole motherfucking tire. Now, I know this girl did it in record time. I'm not ever going to take that away from Hannah. But, like, how many scenes did we get of zombies jumping over the cars and shit? You could see the, oh, their shadows the, against the wall, and it's the same <laughs> scenes over and over, it feels like. 
it's the funniest thing because that scene reminds me of one thing in particular from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There's a scene in the movie where there's two guys standing at a castle and uh, Sir uh, Lancelot, I believe it is, uh, is running toward the castle and he and then they and it cuts to them. And it cuts back to him, and he's in the same place every time that it cuts back. Yeah. Like he's not moved forward at all. Yes. And all of a sudden, after they've done this like five times, then he's immediately in front of them, and he cuts their throat. Okay, I'm glad you said something. It's, it's just like this movie, because literally you're looking, and every time it cuts to the zombies, it's like, shouldn't they be like over top of the vehicle? No, they're not there yet. Yeah. Okay, now they're over the vehicles, but isn't that right beside? No, apparently not. And... <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it's just like, how how far away were these fuckers, you know? Exactly. How long is this tunnel? Um, The Bible verse on Jim's postcard is from the book of Nahum. Uh, Nahum was a prophet who predicted the destruction of the great city of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire. It was to be utterly destroyed as a punishment for its inhabitants' sins. Wow. That's pretty, it's pretty deep cut. Yeah. Pretty deep cut. Uh, the flashback scenes of Jim's parents when he's hallucinating in front of the refrigerator uh, were shot on Super 8 millimeter film. They they look really bad, <laughs> blown up, but they're supposed to. Yes. They're, they're supposed to look that way. Uh, that is so crazy, though, that, like, he's sitting there and, like, the light, you know, yes. is, is, like, going off, and, like, that's what triggers the rage zombies to, to come after him. Yeah, which... Uh, on top of the London... Oh, God. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, nothing. I was just going to say. I was say, just going to start with the next one. Yeah, no, the, it's insane because obviously the zombies can't get to that sky high building that um, Hannah and Frank are in, but they have the yeah. Christmas lights going off, which is obviously to attract other people and let them know, hey, we're alive, you know, if they're still alive in there. Um, so the candle, which they had not seen the lights yet, like I get it, but like it's just crazy that. <laughs> I saw that candle and was like, uh-uh, I just know something's going to come through that window. Well, it's like the scene in World War Z where they start singing and you're like, what the fuck are you doing? You like you... <laughs> uh But yeah, the candle and it's like, okay, they see it. They're going to start attacking now. Um, and they do. Yeah. Uh, the, <clears throat> on top of London Tower Block, when Frank is explaining to Jim about the water situation and tells him about using a method he saw on TV using the plastic sheets to capture dew and what condensation, the reason it didn't work is because that that is a asphalt roof. They only, that only works when you have a legit ground with earth and dirt and that actually has moisture in it, and the next day it can collect on the sheets when it rises up in the morning as dew. Did you also see that he had a hamper on the roof? Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I don't know if you if you noticed this or you drew the, you kind of like, oh, fuck, they're fucked. But did you notice that their goldfish that seemingly looked to be in pretty decent health had very low water? No, I didn't notice that. That's a good point. So they've been drinking out of his... Uh, uh, or dipping water out of that to survive. Possibly at that, point. that they were drinking. Yeah, either they were drinking water or the water dissipates. So you know they could have that not was, been drinking out of it because obviously they, they might have been using it for the toilet. Maybe. 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 Or it just the water started dissipating because I would have to reload my fish tank too. It doesn't take very long, and they didn't have water to reload it. So those fish, goldfish, were on borrowed time. <laughs> Uh, and and goldfish are not at the top of the Mm-mm. pits to save slash eat. No, absolutely uh, not. I would scale. not be drinking their water either. That water is full of shit, literally. I well, I think that it might have been used for toilet water because yeah. you do have to have a sizable amount of water in the bowl to be able to flush it. That's and true. I mean, you know, I mean, where they're at, and uh, I would just be sticking my ass out the window. And I mean, who's gonna look? Who's gonna look? Well, for for. For real, Frank could have been pissing off the side. Yeah. That would have been no issue. Oh, like, for I sure. Mean, nope. I would have been sticking my butt out and well, more. And... Actually, actually, did they not have a bucket they were using for that and throwing it off the side? Did they have would... that? that uh, I, I could have swore that was in the movie. Maybe I made that up. It would like, make the I'd... most sense. Did they clear out that whole apartment building? Was that, like, infected and they survived and they were able to clear it out? They would have had to clear it out because yeah. the infected would have came after them on a daily basis. I mean, one hundred percent. You know, they still have the dead coming after them. 
there's probably a story in that if they ever want to expand it where Frank and, and a bunch of his neighbors probably held up for a while. And then whenever they started falling one by one, it, it, it was just him and Hannah at that point. Oh, my God. That's fucking insane. Uh, although unconfirmed, the title may refer to the fact that peak immunity from a virus is widely considered to occur 28 days after the infection is contracted. Peak Pretty immunity? Smart. Yeah, so your body builds up the antibodies and, and, and is able to fight off the infection after four weeks. That's okay. how long it takes, you know. I like it. And 28 days is how long it takes for those zombies to die of starvation. So there you go. Yes, because the virus is keeping them alive. Again, I that's why I thought maybe it was kind of like a host situation. But then if it's if it's if you're recovering from it but you haven't ate anything or drank anything or whatnot, you're gonna fucking die. You didn't eat for almost a month. Well, I don't think there's any coming back from the virus. Mm-hmm. I mean, once they're infected, I'm just saying that they're linking it to the fact that the zombie virus will or the rage virus will burn itself out in four weeks because mm-hmm. of you know other things what if in you your own body yeah. you know but what if you didn't do anything to make your body die other than not eat like what if you had a rage zombie and it was chained down and you were you had an iv and it was getting sugar so it was technically oh, getting it, nutrients oh it would it would survive i mean mm-hmm. there's nothing to keep it from from I, but my argument is, is they they have to at least have the intelligence to be drinking water because they okay. have to have water exactly. And and sitting there biting, uh, by that point there's not that many survivors to bite. But even if they and they and they don't go out of their way to necessarily bite, they scratch and vomit, and they're vomiting blood like crazy too. So they're losing a lot of fluid. Yes, a that's lot true. Of fluid. A lot of electrolytes, everybody. <laughs> So you would think with that much loss of electrolytes and fluid that they would have to be drinking water like crazy. Yeah. Which also, if we go back to Cabin Fever, which is a very smart movie in its own way, you better be what fucking watching big time what water you're drinking in this reality because you're going to be getting the virus. You're going to be getting that virus in that water. Gross. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when Jim and the members of the group in the taxi stop at a roadside diner on the way to Manchester and Jim is attacked by the infected, uh, that is the part where he says, I hate you, I hate you. Uh, which is the only time that you ever hear one of the infected speak in the movie. Why they left that in, I don't know, but it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, I think it makes sense. I think it's a kid that's, that hit, w- one, obviously we know what the rage virus is. I don't need, if I need to explain that to you, you, you shouldn't be here. But that being said, I think that the, um, I, I don't, I can't tell if the kid is, is he at the point where he's trying to get over the virus? So, like we said, that 28-day gestation period, if you will, that's not really what it is, but that's what I'm calling it. Or did he just recently get the virus and that's him still? Because um, what's his name? Frank could talk at the beginning when he was turning into a zombie. He was, Yeah, he did for like a, a second or two. He was just like, get away, get away. And exactly. he starts like twitching and then, you know. Yeah. Uh, so two things. A, it's cool if that kid is on the missing thing, like you said. Yeah. Very well could be. B, how cool would it be if that was the kid from the beginning of part two? I do. It looks that, like him. If, if I mean, I know they couldn't. It was, it was too many years apart and all that. But if they could link those two characters and say they were the same one, and that kid, you know, was the one that fucked over Don and Alice and everybody in the yeah. beginning of part two. That would be amazing because, if that was the link between them. Well, it wasn't him. He was uh, potentially, okay, wait. Was he like his sister where he couldn't get infected because she had the, I forgot what that no, gene No, no, I'm, I'm not talking about their kid. I'm oh. talking about, you, you. they're in the, they're boarded up inside the college. Oh, I know what and you're then talking, they, yeah. they, they make the stupid decision to let this kid in. And then I've got it in the, the, the quotes for that movie, but he's got this awesome line in a bad way where they're like, uh, so what happened? He's like, well, my mommy and my daddy tried to kill me and then they followed me. And then, and then loads of other people also followed me. And then that's why all of a sudden, bam, bam, yeah. bam, you know, like they're beating on the door. So he led the zombies to them. You know, they would have been oh. fine if it hadn't been for this fucking kid. And he yes. gets infected because he's in there with Alice and they both get the infection. She happens to be a carrier, not actually affected by it. Yes. But, how cool would it have been for that kid to have been the one that was in the cottage that fucked them over and it's 20 because that, that that's that scene in 28 weeks later is at the beginning of the virus. yes not, not at the not end at like the end. you know with jim and the rest of them but at the beginning 
Yeah, I, I think it's possible. And I think that kid looks a lot like him because I'm looking at the pictures and I'm like, mm, because once I pulled up that kid that was on the missing poster, which I can't get the photo for some reason, but it does show the hamburger, uh, the kid from the hamburger stand, if you will. And I'm like, and then they're like, hey, what if this kid is this kid? And I'm like, they look identical. And I hate to be one of those people that's like, oh, you white people look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we do. We, we, I mean, we don't teach other, but I could see that from outside sources. <laughs> it's okay. I'm Mexican. And we don't think that we look like all the Mexicans, but we do. We look a lot, unless, you know, there's a skin tone difference. <laughs> well, that, I was getting ready to say, you at least have that. I mean, there's, and, and there is with, I guess, white people too. There's the dark tan and then there's, you know, me, which is, you know, the sun hates me and wants to kill me on a <laughs> daily basis, but I at least get reddish colored. I'm not. I'm not one of those very pale albino redheads, so there's that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Megan Burns retired from acting, like I said earlier, after appearing in this film, not wishing to pursue a full-time career as an actress. She fo focused on her passion for music and singing, uh, and she went into another film for 16 years uh, and, and until she was cast in a short film called Intruders, uh, which has got one of those awful spellings like seven yeah. words, I-N, the in number two, R-U-D-E-R-S. Uh, in Reuters, yeah. Uh, and then nothing after that as of March 2024. So, yeah, she's not been in. Uh, kudos to her. I mean, you know, she yeah. got in the movies, said this ain't for me, and went about her life. Uh, the word fuck is used 61 times in this movie. Mm, those are rookie I numbers. I would use it more often. Yeah. I would have went around just saying, we're fucked, we're fucked, yeah. fuck this, fuck him, fuck you. You know, I would have probably said it all the time. Make a song out of it. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> running fuck, 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 fuck. you know i like yours better because it's just like the end of uh the original dawn of the oh, day. yeah fuck 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 fuck, fuck. <laughs> uh killian murphy would go on to star in the sci-fi thriller sunshine actually that was afterwards so this was oh, one shit. of his first movies alongside rose byrne who had starred in, in 28, 28 weeks, weeks later yep. the sequel to this movie so pretty interesting that they were together in a yeah. movie after this uh, the movie is spoofed in the music video to LMFAO's Party Rock Anthem. Yes, I've seen that I've video. It. It's pretty I, funny. Uh, the scene where Major West reveals his plans for Hannah and Selena to jam was written by Killian <gasps> Murphy, Christopher Eccleston, and Alex Garland the night before it was shot. A different scene had been scripted and shot, but no one was happy with it, especially the two actors. So Jeez. Killian Murphy and Christopher Eccleston got together with the writer of the movie and said, we don't like this next part of the movie we're going to make it a whole thing about grape and, and grapes in general. And he was like, you know what? That actually is so dark at work. So let's do it. Yeah. I mean, it makes, it's a sign of the times. It, it, it makes sense. <laughs> I hate to say it. Uh, it's man, this movie gets so dark in places, mm -hmm. but it, it, it has to, you I mean, had for it to, to be realistic. Exactly. Uh, the execution pit scene near the end was filmed outside of a church on Withington Road connecting the Salisbury to downtown. One of the prop teams didn't pick up the fake bodies after filming. No. Oh. <laughs> a local hairdresser from Downton uh, saw them from the road, panicked, crashed <gasps> her car, and then phoned the police who came to investigate and interrogate the crew. So she was driving down the road, saw this fucking fake body laying there, crashed her fucking car, and was like, there's a body on the side of the road. <laughs> This dumb bitch, she probably would have gotten out of her car, be like, is it still alive? And then it pops up and bites her rage virus all over again. Hey, I don't know what the English name for a Karen is. I know that's an English term, mm -hmm. but, you know, they probably have different names over in England, you know. But she was the English version of a Karen. Well, Let's just say it. I wonder you know? if she sued the set. Like, I could totally see somebody. <laughs> maybe not because, like, I live in California, so that's something that would happen out here. But maybe out there it's not that prevalent, you know? <laughs> Uh, several endings were filmed, uh, including a, a, a few in which Jim, uh, uh, played by Kelly Murphy, was taken to the hospital where he succumbs to his gunshot wound, despite efforts by Selena to revive him, and which left Selena and Hannah su subsequently leaving the hospital together, an open ending that was meant to suggest they would make it, just like Dawn of the Dead, the original oh, movie, yeah. and the remake. You just leave the survivors going out into the world, and best of luck to you. Yeah. Don't know what's going to happen. But... This being modern times, test audiences took that as a sign that they were going to walk into their own death, uh, and the filmmakers changed it because so so it 
have a little bit more uplifting ending. I think it's funny that they thought that because you know how modern Gen Zers would take oh, yeah. that response. They'd be like, so two women, two powerful women walking outside of a building means they're going to die without the man in tow. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know. Well, they might have got great if they, you know, met the wrong people. So possibly, you know, it is um, it it shows that Killian has a scene or Jim, I should say, where he's like, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And he basically is his way of saying thank you. And then at the same time, she wouldn't have been saved if it weren't for him. So it's like he paid her back. They were even. Yeah, even Steven. Mm-hmm. And and they got to knock boots. So they both got a little bit out of that. Yep. Uh, Danny Boyle and Naomi Harris developed a backstory to explain Selena's hard nosed, ruthlessly traumatic outlook. Uh, apparently, Selena was forced to kill her infected mother and father to save her baby brother, only to discover that her brother was already infected and she, it was all for nothing, anyways. Son of a bitch. So, I mean, if you have to kill your entire family, that's going to do some shit to you. But I'll do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> More than, and if you wait a heartbeat, you're going to be dead. So exactly. there you go. All right. I, I think we've gushed over this enough uh, for people to know that we pretty much love this movie. And yeah. I don't know anybody who watches modern movies who thinks this is a bad movie. If you hate it, it's because it scares the shit out of you. And I don't blame you for that because I still get nervous watching this movie. I already said it. That scene, and I know that they don't get hurt in that yeah. scene, but I'm still waiting for somebody to attack them. It's just how good the movie is. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that one. I was sitting up. Noah was having a really hard time because I couldn't sit still. So I was moving from spot from like my side of the bed to his side of the bed. And then he kind of put his arm, and I, I, gr- I guess I gripped his arm super tight, and he's like, I can't save you. And I was like, well, you fucking better. <laughs> and he's like, what do you want me to do, punch the TV? And I was like, well, if you have to. Like, I don't, turn the TV off. I don't know. I'm scared. What do you want me to do? This is a well-made movie all around. If you sit there, I mean, and it's a good horror movie. It, it I mean, it really is. But if you sit there and you say, oh, this movie is, is, is shit. You, I don't know what movie you watched, but you, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you can be mad at it because it scared the shit out of you. Yeah, yes. Perfectly reasonable. Just I will don't say. Don't call it a bad movie. When I say not. I hate this movie, it's because it scared the fuck out of me. So, uh, there, there's just so many good scenes. Like I said, the script is so well written, uh, so tight, and and there's such minimal stuff to it. But it gives you visually everything you need to know to connect the dots, and and the actors sell it enough to connect any dots that they need to, you know, to make it work. Yeah, um, it's four and a half at least. I, I want to give it higher. I want to say five, but I got to give myself some wiggle room here. It's a four and a half for sure. I would, I'm going to, I'm going to cage it this way. If it wasn't for the lack of availability of physical media and it's not against the movie. So this is a shit thing just to rationalize this. And the fact that it's uh, you know, there's no current like high def way to watch it. I'm going to give it that four and a half out of that. That's it's a bullshit reason. Cause it really is a good movie. And, any day of the week, I'd probably say it's a five. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to give myself some room maneuver because it's almost a damn perfect movie for what it is. I I don't know that I don't know that my score would move up, or if it would change by what we're gonna watch later on. And I don't have any examples, so it's not like I have anything in mind. But I would watch this movie on my phone. I would watch this movie on a little camping TV. I don't, I, there's, I would watch this movie even in lower def. It's so good. It is such a good movie. It's such a good storyline, such it, good music. It, it doesn't hurt the movie, Mm-mm. really. I mean, it's a say, I mean, me saying that, like I said, it's just, I, I, I'm, I'm, let's well, just say 4.8. I mean, I really wanna give it a five, and I should just, give it a five because i do love this fucking movie i uh, it's it's one of my top zombie movies period even though you can make the argument it's not a zombie movie it's infected humans whatever bullshit it they're, they're zombies you know? yeah um it's a 4.7 for me it's high <laughs> yeah it's there's there's very little to this movie that's bad yeah i mean other you know uh, you can nitpick probably certain things like you know why could they see why randomly could they see a candle of all things but they're all over the place. They're all, they, yeah, you I don't mean, know where they're at. That's the thing is you don't know that they weren't already right there. They were already in danger from having to stay there. 
so you know, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna nitpick. And if if your if your movie is so scary, I don't want to watch it again, and I'm not happy to rewatch it again. You've done a good job, in my opinion. Just like what it, movie do I not want to see again? Um, not Late Night with the Devil, but um, oh God, what's that? That Hispanic movie that I made you watch that was a Shutter exclusive. Oh, uh, oh God, what is that when, movie? When uh, Evil the, Lurks. It, it, Evil Lurks, yeah, yeah or something like that. I don't, like don't want to yeah. watch that movie again. And it's not because it wasn't an amazing film. I, I'm well, not going to do it. You know, that's technically a zombie movie, right? I you know that that like is. It. I know. It's got that zombie <laughs> apocalypse feel. But it's even worse because it's like possessed zombies. Yeah, and they're the worst kind of zombie. Yeah, it's I mean, Evil because, Dead almost. Yeah. God, I might have to include a rewatch of that for when we cover Evil Dead, but that's the whole thing. Anyways. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to change my rating right here a lot. It's a five because uh, it's a horror movie. That's, that's horrific. I mean, it mm-hmm. delivers on it. So it's a five. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm tired of bullshit. And it's, <laughs> it's, I, if I, that's not going to take away from the fact that I'm probably going to give a, well, I'm definitely going to give a five to at least two more movies, at least to this season. That's but, fine. This, we don't, they don't have favorite, to be exclusive to this anything. Is my, this is my favorite fucking genre. I, despite the fact that it's played the fucking death. I love, zombie movies i really do yeah i hate zombie films and that that's why i'm having a hard time handing out them fives you know so uh, I'll, I'll amend it no 4.5 it's a five just uh, i i'm not going to give that i'm just going to spoil alert i'm not giving that 28 weeks later i do have a problem <laughs> with that movie i do i guess we'll get into that here coming up soon we will. Uh, anything else you want to say about this movie? Because I kind of spoke over you. Just go ahead no, and have your piece there. You're fine. I I'm I I'm I don't think I had anything else to say. And we are two and a half hours into this, so I think we had a lot to say. I know we could go on forever, but that's not how the show works. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so catch us next time for twenty eight weeks later. And with that, peace be with you. And with your spirit. <laughs>